Alrighty, welcome to another episode of the Drunken Boxing Podcast, and I have a great episode in store for you. Today's guest is the renowned pioneer, Andrea Falk. Hailing from Canada, Andrea started practicing martial arts in 1972 and realized Chinese martial arts would be her life's path. She earned her Bachelor of Arts in Chinese and then her Bachelor of Arts in Physical Education in Vancouver, where she also trained under Alex Kwok. She applied and won a scholarship to the Beijing College of Physical Education, also known as the Beijing Sports University, where she arrived in 1980 as the first group of Westerners to be enrolled officially in the Wushu program there. And she studied for three years with Xia Hua, the legend, as her main coach. It was during her time in China that she fell in love with and started practicing Ba Gua Zhang and Tai Ji Quan. Following her return to Canada, she established the Wushu Center as she continued her training and studies under renowned masters of the Chinese martial arts, and uh, returning to Beijing annually to train as well. In 1985, she was the only non-Asian medalist at the International Taiji Chuan Invitational Competition in Wuhan. She studied intensively under Huan Dahai in Shanghai, in the old style of Chen Taiji Chuan, and Ma Gui Ba Guazhang under Li Bao Hua. She has studied under Di Guoyong in Xingyi and Liang style Bagua, as well as Cheng Jiefeng in the Jiang style of Bagua. Andrea is best known for her excellent books. She has translated numerous works on the Chinese martial arts, which are regarded as the pinnacle of books available in English due to her deep understanding of the arts as well as her language skills. She is a truly dedicated martial arts who's had an incredible life experience as a pioneer in China. And she shares this insight in her in this wonderful discussion. So let's get right into it. And uh, I present to you the great Andrea Falk. Okay, welcome, Andrea. <laughs> Good to have you here. Thank you. Um, so you're in Beijing. You're training for a few days here in Beijing, and then where are you going to go? Uh, oh. Back to Shanghai. Okay. And then to London or England. How long are you going to be in England for? Three weeks. Teaching? Teaching. Well, not legally, no. Ah, no. Hanging Just out hanging with, out with... Hanging friends. out with people. Okay. Uh, doing Xingyi and Bagua. All right. Okay. And are you going to be in one place in, in London for... Th- or sorry, England for three weeks or moving... No, because I'm bell ringing. I'll be going around. But I'll be hanging out with people in Basingstoke. Okay. For, uh, How long are you going to be with the, with the training group, though? Each weekend. Ah, so, so in between you'll be going around yeah, to do your... Ringing, yeah. To do yeah. your... And in Shanghai, what, what have you been up to in Shanghai? I know you've been training out of Shanghai for a long time. The listeners won't know. So. <laughs> uh, Jiang style. Jiang style yeah. Bagua. Jiang style Bagua. Anybody particular that you, you train with there? Uh, it's Chang Jiefeng. He's my martial brother. But he's not known in any way. He hides. So. Okay. You, so you both trained under the same teacher before? Yeah. He's also trained directly with Jiang, Jiang Wanchao. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So... Does he deliberately want to stay yes. obscure? Yes, he does. Okay, so we're not gonna. So we're get, not gonna. Yeah. We're not gonna get contact details from <laughs> no, you on no, this. We're no, we're not. <laughs> no. And what led you to to Shanghai? I mean, let's go back a little bit because you've got a really interesting story too. You started uh, martial arts, obviously, in your youth. I think. Well, you tell the 17. story. Seventeen. Okay. How did you begin? Oh, a friend wanted to try the kung fu, but it was a sort of a scary part of town, and so she had me go along. And I started and she didn't. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of a reverse effect of what yeah, you had originally yeah, yeah. planned. She didn't really like it, but uh, I took to it. This was in Canada? Yeah, in Victoria. W- in Victoria. And who was who was the school? Was it, is it still around? It was a Shaolin club. I mean, it's not around anymore. It was in the old judo club, which is around still, which is cool. And what did, what put her off training? Oh, she just didn't, you know, just didn't suit, you know. Ah, what did yeah. she think it was going to be like? Or... Well, you don't know. You just go yeah. in here. And what made you like it? Oh, they stuck me in a horse dance and put me in a corner and forgot I was there. <laughs> that was the best <laughs> thing you... I'd ever done. <laughs> and you're like, this is for yeah, me. This is me. This is me. <laughs> I'm not big on team sports. Okay. But, yeah, oh, this is cool. And yeah. from there, where did it go? Uh, then I decided to do Chinese and do my degree in Chinese and that and I had to move to Vancouver to do that and then I trained with Alex Kwok right who was is incredible what 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 was he teaching in uh, he does my John Lo Han. okay and uh, just in a rec center sort of a thing but he was he was really really good he still is he's, he's one still of the good. few people I knew from before that when you come back after the shiny experience he's still like awesome 
really good. That's amazing. I mean, I also know Alex from... He got uh, into the wushu stuff. He got into the wushu. He doesn't do it. No. He got into the judging and stuff. Judging. So I've known him also more than 10 years and he's always been a stand-up guy. He's a really, really good guy and his, his skill is... He's really up there. And he's very... Uh, you don't actually expect that when you no. talk to him or no, deal with him. No, you wouldn't know. Yeah. But I know from his history that he was actually quite heavy into the circuit, fighting circuit. And, his and he was well known. fighting was really good. I yeah. mean, he didn't bother to compete. By the time I was training with him, he was just too good. It yeah. was a joke. If he fought with anybody, he basically waited till he got bored and then beat them up. <laughs> I mean, you just couldn't get in on him. You couldn't. So our club was... Sort of supposed to be half and half fighting and form, but we did more fighting than form. Okay. Yeah. And that was Mizon Lohan. How long yeah. were you there for? The whole uh, time you were studying Chinese? Yeah, well, then I did a phys ed degree as well, so that I could get the scholarship and go to the sports school rather than getting stuck doing something else. Mm-hmm. So I was at UBC for, I don't know, six years or some ridiculous length of time. What, so what year was that that you were there? Uh, I'm giving away your age, but it doesn't no, matter. No, that's fine. I'm 65. Get it out there. <laughs> um, 72, I think I started. Uni- I think I graduated in 80. Yeah, because I was in China in 80. Okay. So I graduated phys ed in 80. So I graduated my Chinese in 77 or 78. Because I already had a lot of stuff. I didn't have to do the whole four-year thing for phys ed. Okay. A couple more years I got it. So you did the Chinese, um, and that was your first exposure with the language? Yeah. And w- what did your parents think that you're like... Did they I just told them that I was going to do this, I was going to get a scholarship, and I was going to go to China. And they're like, okay. <laughs> That's totally normal. <laughs> Lawyer, this one's becoming a doctor. She wants to do phys ed, learn yeah, Chinese, well, and run off to yeah, China. My parents were really, really good about each of us doing our own thing and being who we were. Was there anybody else in your family or siblings that did martial arts? No, not at all. No one? No, I have one who's an animator. He's super, super mm-hmm. good. He's an artist. And, and sports to him is like maybe going for a walk if he has to. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. the other guy's a computer just wow. complete computer thing. So when you were growing up and this was your hobby, did they think you were weird? No. Okay. No. You have any sisters? No. Only brothers? Yeah. So of the siblings, the girl is the one that's interested in fighting. I, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. The other is not, not at all. Okay. Yeah. So then you finished your, um, your phys ed uh, de- well, degree. Degree, and then, yeah. And then you applied for a scholarship in China. Yeah. And that was with where? It's the it was the it's the university and colleges Canada something like that. There were seven that went, and I think it was about seven a year. I mm. don't know how long the program lasted. We might have been the first because I don't think people could go before eighty. Mm. No, I think you were the first. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know that. I just oh, there's a scholarship. I think I'll go. Mm-hmm. And then it got down, and seven people were picked and went. And so we were paid. Uh, for that time, it was pretty decent. We got $100 a month. Oh, a lot of money. <laughs> so that was as much as any of the teachers were getting. Yeah. Plus, we had, uh, depending on what university you're at, we had 160, I think, UMB, a month, which at that time was incredible. But our food was expensive at the Shabailo. Okay. Where were you staying at that time? At Shabailo, in the, the university. Okay. Sports University, Beijing. I knew which was the best one. I applied to that. And the others that you said also got the scholarship, were they at the same oh, university? No, no, no. You, we all, you all start out at the Language Institute. And then if you've got the Chinese, you, you can you apply to go where you want to go. One went to law at Beida. Uh, I think a couple of them were just kind of wanted the experience and didn't really go anywhere. I think they stayed, stayed there. Oh, okay. Uh, I think couple went to the to Beda. Anyway, people sort of, once you get there, then you applied to where you really wanted to be. Otherwise, was, you were stuck at the language institute. Was your plan to go to China and to Beda to follow up with Not Chinese? Not Beda, mo- Beijing to Udashua. Sorry, Beijing to Udashua, yeah. the sports university. Yeah. Was your plan to go there and to follow, continue with Chinese martial arts? Yeah. And, and, how, and how did that... Uh, how did that turn out? How did me? that turn out? <laughs> what was that like? I mean... It was... It was I'd never done Wushu. I did my Zhang Ahan, right? Uh, yeah, at that point, you'd only done that, right? And I could fight. Yeah. And we did forms. 
but it, yeah, it wasn't really kind of my thing. I could do them, but I was fine. Uh, so then you get there, and all of a sudden, I've seen Wushu. Yeah. Because it was starting to come in. I had yeah. a friend that did Wushu. He okay. was training with Wajir Tongue in Seattle, and he'd go down there. So I'd seen a fair bit. And I knew it was the thing to do in competition. It was starting to be the flashy thing to do in mm-hmm. competition. But you're talking about 70s wushu. Right. Be. So it was, it was like first generation, second generation. To us, it looked pretty flashy. Yeah. Right. But it's that first gen stuff. Yeah. But I think there's a special quality to that generation of wushu. It was wushu. pretty cool, yeah. Mm. But to me, it was like, because mm, I did real stuff, right? And yeah. It was, still, it was pretty flashy. But for some reason, I wanted to go to China and I don't know. I thought processes, you know, what's going on. <laughs> well, I, I don't think you knew what to expect either. <laughs> yeah, I so. didn't know what to expect. So when you get there and you see all these people and they're all, and this is just the sports institute. This is people trained to be teachers and coaches. They were incredible. They were just really, really good because it was the first, it's like 77 was the first time universities were open again. Mm. So the people of 70, class of 77, 78, 79 even, they were still people who had only trained traditionally with family, yeah. basically, because they weren't allowed to train yeah. during the Cultural Revolution. Yeah. They were in- amazing. They were really, really good. And then they were having to learn the wushu. Yeah. But what they could do, they all had a traditional style. They wow. Really good. It was quite something. So would you say that when you arrived, what you saw, did it? were you disappointed? No, or? no, it was like, oh, the, the, the bar just rose. <laughs> a little bit higher <laughs> than you were expecting. A little bit higher than I'd ever had to do. And the, the how hard we had to train, I'd never had to train that hard in my life. You know? What was it like every day? Oh, it was brutal, basically. You know, it was just, you were just exhausted. I know what that chronic overload training is. Sure. You know, just... Just continue all the, all the time training. Was there a lot of academic uh, studies or mostly just training and uh, physical? No, it's it's a degree. Yeah. But because I came in with a degree, I was in advanced studies. There, there's a Jinsho. Yeah. It's an advanced studies degree that, that if people have been on a team, they do that. It's a two-year program and it's mostly training. And they're doing the theory because I already had a phys ed degree as well as my Chinese degree. I didn't have to study Chinese because I could already read. Right. And I I went to some classes like anatomy and stuff like that just for the fun to get the Chinese vocabulary. But I already had that. You had a degree. I had a degree. And they finally realized that I didn't really need to do that. So they said, well, you can go along if you want just to improve your Chinese. And so I'd, I'd do that, but I didn't have to take the exams. So comparing the Chinese, like that part of the, the the curriculum, if you compared it to what you studied in, in, in the West, would you say it's on par? Were they behind? Oh, you're talking about 1980. Yeah. Uh, the anatomy is anatomy. Yeah. The first day he came in and, and he, he came in and he sort of slapped this slab of a thing down on the table in front of me because he wanted to freak out the foreigner. Mm-hmm. And you say, what do you think about that? And and we'd studied that with plastic models. We didn't study it with actual legs and people. We <laughs> tried out. <laughs> Holy smoke. That's an actual real leg with real muscles on it. Oh, he slapped on a leg yeah, from yeah, a yeah. cadaver. Well, it was dried out, kind of, yeah. But, I mean, that's really... <laughs> what did you say to him when he asked you, what do you think well, of I that? Well, I had to go, oh, that's, oh, that's, that's cool, thank you. <laughs> you didn't <laughs> say, where's the salt? No. <laughs> I didn't. I uh, didn't freak out on him. He was hoping for more of a freak out, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he didn't get a he didn't get a rise out of you, and no, uh, no. Interesting. So so then you didn't have to go to all those classes. You spent most of your time training. So I did. Yeah. Eventually, I got tired of going along to the classes that I didn't have to. And I, Wait a sec. I don't have to be doing this. So uh, more training. How many hours a day do you think you were training at that time? Probably six. Yeah, that's that's so, heavy, yeah. especially at that intensity. You've got the morning sort of workout stuff, which isn't training. Hmm. And then there's classes. I guess it was three-hour classes in that. And then I would do extra training because I didn't have to go to, to theory classes. Right. Yeah. Were there any other foreigners with you there at that time? Uh, there was... Third world people, okay. in basketball, ping pong, uh, yeah. <laughs> basketball and ping pong. <laughs> kind of, yeah, there's a bunch of people in ping pong. But nobody doing Chinese martial no, arts? No, 
So you were really, I mean, you were I one of the first. first. One. I yeah. was the test to see if they were going to do that. Yeah. I was the first Westerner. They wanted to see how well behaved you were. They picked badly there because I was so well behaved. They thought that's what we were like. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is going to be easy. It's going to be easy. There's no sweat at all. She does exactly what she's supposed to be doing all the time and, and doesn't cause any trouble whatsoever. Then the next group came along oh, and yeah, they were they swinging were from the chandeliers. They were surprised. Yeah. <laughs> But I was um, a government scholarship student, so I knew if I messed up, I could lose my scholarship. Yeah. Where after that, everybody was paid for. And you were pretty serious as well. And I mean, I you serious, you had yeah. a plan to come there. It wasn't just off the just off the spur well, of the anybody moment. Anybody that comes to China, you know, they've got a plan. I think, ish. Well, but I, I mean, was, arguably, you could yeah. do basketball in another university in the West. But well, you no, had, because the people that were doing that were getting a, a physical education degree that they couldn't get in their own countries. Okay. It's not like Westerners. Right? The other foreigners who were there were getting a degree. They were going to improve their lives when they went back home. Yeah, right? for sure. They Did you mingle with any of them? Well, that, that was it. That was our family. You know? Do you still keep in contact with any of those no, people? Cause no, because you're talking about Somalia. And, and, oh. you know, and You're talking about places that you just don't. And that was before the days of... Even long distance phones back yeah. here, right? There's no emails or anything that you could trade off. Yeah, to keep in contact, right? Yeah, You've yeah, got a postal yeah. address. You're talking about some pretty rough countries. Right. And it was all those like Pakistan, Somalia, Yemen. Uh, yeah. Some pretty rough places. Did any of them come to watch the Wushu and think, no, wow, this no, girl is no, crazy? No, no, no. no not. It's in the Wushu at all. But that was my family, basically, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And who were the, the generation of teachers teaching you at that time? Zhang Wenguang was head of department, so and he was in charge of me. Okay. So he would be the one. He'd come and have chats with me and stuff like that. Uh, Xiaobo is my teacher. Xiaobo, mm, okay. And he was he was sort of assigned this foreigner. That's going to be your job. So he had he was developing the sparring team. He was developing Sanda. Sanda, at the working time. out the rules for it, yeah. teaching these guys how to fight and that. Yeah. And me basically, uh, Ma Hui Feng was also did a fair bit of teaching for me. Um, so they were all people that were traditionalists again. Yeah. They knew their thing and they were working out the Chang Chen stuff. So just, just because some people won't know mm. these people's backgrounds, you mm. want to talk a little bit about their background, like Zhang Wenguang? Zhang Wenguang is a wrestler, super good wrestler in Cha Chen. Yeah. And he is a graduate of the Nanjing Academy. And I mean, he's just awesome. He's just a really, really cool, really, really, really nice man. And his Cha Chen was beautiful. Yeah, I mean, you could and still coming see from a Mai Zhang Luohan background, you could I associate. Love Cha Chen, right? And I saw that, so that's really, really nice stuff. And what was he like teaching a foreigner? Was he open? Was he? Uh, he was, just, yeah. He really was sweet. happy to. Yeah, yeah. He he. Well, because I worked hard, and you know. Whatever. I think that's he the kicker for most yeah, of these Chinese yeah. teachers that are genuine teachers. If yeah. you work hard, then they genuinely want to teach you. Yeah, so. and he'd come in in the evening or something and passing through, and I'd be there just doing kicks on my own. I was pretty bad. Yeah. So I had to do this extra training. He'd come in and say, oh, you're training just on your own. So yeah, I'm just trying to get these stupid straight kicks. So, yeah. You know. Uh, and Shabu was it was really, really, really open. He's uh, just a completely natural person who never had any kind of ego thing going on. Yeah. Though. And we had fun because he was, he was working out the sparring team and I came with equipment. So you came with sparring gear? I, came with, I didn't know, right? Yeah. I really honestly didn't know what I was getting into. I came with sparring gear. Of course I came with sparring yeah. gear. So I was sparring with the guys that he was working out how to, you know, what they were going to do with the sundown. Right. They were working it out. It was the yeah. first year they'd yeah. ever done it. And he yeah. was in charge of and that. So he was a good fighter. And he fought by different rules, unfortunately, than me, because he'd grab my leg when I kicked and throw me to the ground. I'd say, wait a second. That's not what we do. <laughs> so uh, he wasn't shy at all about uh, smacking me around. It was great. But somebody saw this. Oh. So a few months in the word came down that I, we weren't allowed to do that anymore. Yeah, because they were probably worried. You're there on a scholarship. You're the first foreigner. The last thing they want you to do is get injured, and yeah. there's a bad name for yeah. Yeah. for everything. Yeah. yeah, so that was out. Oh, well, no. I had fun for the first bit, though. Okay. Yeah. And what's his background, if you know it? He knows pretty much a bit of everything. Yeah. 
uh, as I say, he seemed to be more of a fighting kind of a guy than a form kind of guy. He's he's always said like if somebody wanted him to perform, is that it's just he, no need. He doesn't yeah. he doesn't like routines. He doesn't do well. He's not a performer. Yeah, but he's a good fighter. And he knew Bagua because when we went to a competition, I was traveling around just with the the team and that, and we were pretending I was from Xinjiang or something because I wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> you're from Xinjiang. <laughs> so that's that's the always like, go-to thing I, for foreigners. Yeah, well, yeah, okay, you're Chinese, but you're I'm from Xinjiang. Xinjiang. So the whole team we're staying in this Chinese hotel, and it's like these showers all together and everything like that. And people kind of look at me and they, oh, she's from Xinjiang. Don't worry about <laughs> it. It's like, whatever. We didn't get caught. But so we were at this competition and there's, I saw this girl doing this saber form and the saber was bigger than her. I mean, she was small. Yeah. And I said, what's that? And the shout oh, that's Bagua Zhang. I know that. If you, Because I'd never seen it or heard of it or anything. We were doing Chang Chuan at the university. And so I can teach you that. So he, he definitely knew his Shingi and his Bagua. And he, he knew other stuff as well, Chang Chuan. I mean, he... So was that the, the, the hook that got that you hooked hook, yeah. into Bagua? Yeah, huh? it was amazing what she was doing with the saber. And it really, it was, it, it, the saber was as big as her. Yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, Sha, Sha Hua, I mean, I've known him also for quite a few years, mm-hmm. obviously not as long as you. And mm-hmm. I just have one memory that always stands out is, I think it was 2008 mm-hmm. or maybe before that. Anyway, I was in some, I can't even recall which Chinese city we had a international judges mm-hmm. uh, exam and um i was there and uh, he was one of the lecturers Mm -hmm. for certain parts of it but i would get up every morning at about six anyway to do my training Mm -hmm. and i'd go outside and And he'd be the only one out there. he's the only one out there it was only me and him and he was doing xing yi every morning every single morning he was doing five elements he was trained and he was old already at this time and uh, i I got on very well with him i just recall him uh uh, teaching uh, a lecture to to the international judges talking mm-hmm. about uh, overall performance, mm-hmm. you know, and how routines. And he made a big impact on me. He's one mm-hmm. of the people that Im- impacted my perspective also. Mm-hmm. He was actually admonishing everyone mm-hmm. in the room, basically mm-hmm. saying, what is what are you guys doing with... Uh, with uh, your athletes and what yeah. you're compiling he of routines? It. And you see... Gun Shu or staff, you know, yeah, and all it is is woo, 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 yeah, yeah. swinging this thing around, yeah. no point, no meaning, just making noise and hitting the yeah, floor. He said, yeah. there's, there's no attack, there's no... Yeah, do. He was, he's a real martial artist. Yeah. What was funny was the translator mm-hmm. didn't translate any of any that, of but that, I mean, no. I spoke Chinese. Yeah. So for me, I was just, yeah. I was actually enjoying his... Yeah. his yeah. And he impacted me quite a lot as well, mm-hmm. because he made me question myself. And I guess that kind of molded my direction into yeah. the future no, too. He, uh, he's, he loves the martial arts, but as... It, not for any ego reason or for money yeah, or yeah, anything yeah. like that. I mean, he is a martial For the artist. value of what they are. And he ha- he was there teaching. I was lucky, but he practiced himself. He always practiced himself. Yeah. And after I'd graduated and I was I went back a summer or two summers or something, and he we were practicing out hiding in the trees sort of that he was keeping me going with the Bagua. And that. So and he, he started teaching you Bagua? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what kind of Bagua he was teaching you? It, um, it was probably Chang style, okay. but it could have been actually Jiang style, but not as funky as they do it in Shanghai. Okay. I think it was Jiang style. Like when you look in the textbook, it's it is that that Jiang style, but you can do it in a way that's more straightforward. So Jiang Rongqiao's uh, Bagua. Yeah, Jiang Rongqiao's Bagua, but not done as funky as it's okay. done in Shanghai with people that were really with him directly. Probably gone through the Nanjing Academy. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, that a more straightforward Bagua. Did, uh, was he also from the Nanjing Academy? Xiao Bo Hua. I'm I not too sure. don't think so, no. No, I'm not too sure. But And when so. he was teaching you, was that during class time yeah, or was yeah. that extra? No, that was class time. We, uh, I managed to do something to myself. I think I popped my shoulder ligament. So I couldn't do the Chang Chuan for a bit. How did you pop your shoulder leg? Oh, I did a shoulder roll and badly. Oh, yeah, popped that'll it. do it. Yeah, just, yeah. The AC joint. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've popped that one twice and the other one once. Bicycle things. <laughs> One's Aikido. One was just that, just a shoulder roll for no particular reason. I just thought I would do that. 
Uh, one was an Aikido and one was a bicycle. Flip, Aikido flip just falling bike. or somebody? Oh, I really went for a really nice f- fall, yeah. <laughs> you went for a nice fall. <laughs> really <laughs> high and then straight down on it. Not, not a better, better way of taking it. And how is it now after all these? It's pretty good, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I did mine with jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Uh, just a messed up uh, attack that somebody did that just went wrong yeah. and it popped. So. Yeah. But it still gives me a bit of trouble every now and then. My right shoulder is a bit lower than my left. Yeah. No matter yeah. what my, I do. My right, my right is also lower but than I my left. But I have popped the left one as well. Okay. They even out, but no. <laughs> Were you trying to pop it to even it out? No, no. I flipped my bike right over. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I actually recall that. I re- remember you telling me about that before. Yeah, don't ride a fixie on the road. Yeah, that's right. You were saying something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Yeah. So he taught you Bagua? Did he teach you anything else? Well, he was my teacher. Your so, main teacher? Yeah, okay. so we were doing the Chang Chen. At that time, it would have been the, you know, they did the Jia, Yi Bing, anyway, the A, A Zhu. All oh, right, I know. So probably C, um, all that. Yeah. And I think I was doing the Xing Yi before. I know I had to do in Santi for, for a very long time because I couldn't move my right arm too much anyway. Ah. So I did a lot of Santi. That might have helped, uh, huh? Did it help? Did you find well, it? Well, it's not that it helped, but I couldn't really move that arm. Ah, so okay. <laughs> it was something that I could do. And I had to do Taiji then too. Well, that was hell. Also with with uh, Shabu. Because, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he you knows everything. Yeah. You know, at, at the level I was at, I mean, he could... Yeah. At least to an introductory yeah. level, he yeah. could teach most things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I guess the Bagua was maybe later. I don't. So out of all of that that you were learning, Bagua was the one that you enjoyed the most. Would you say then? I did a lot of Shingi. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I switched at some point. I switched. We realized that the the Changchun thing wasn't really what I was ever going to do yeah. well in any <laughs> and I definitely can't jump. So we switched to the internal styles, and then I got to specialize. I forget exactly when that switch was made. Mm. Did I you know. learn, I mean, like Bagua, did you learn the weapons with him at all? No. Or no? no. Just focused on the barehanded practice? Yeah, yeah. And the Xingyi is, again, just the, oh, we did a fair bit of Xingyi. And that's when Mang Hui Feng got involved, because they didn't like each other. It was fun because Sha, you, you know Sha, he's just so straightforward, straightforward, yeah. easygoing, down to earth. Yeah. He's completely opposite of Mang Hui Feng. Yeah. So Mun decided that he was going to really show me Xing Yi because he, he really is a Xing Yi guy, yeah. even though he's a Chuo Zhao guy. Yeah, he's, he's a Chuo Zhao guy. Uh, yeah. But his Xing Yi is very good. Mm. And he, whereas Sha kind of is, knows everything. Mun is more of a specialist, and then he decided to prove his point by teaching me really, really well for my shingi. And he would take me off and do extra sessions with me, and that okay. was great. <laughs> it was good for me to have, have this kind of thing going on, because he wanted good. to show what a good teacher he was. <laughs> Your teachers were competing against <laughs> each other with who well, could Shao teach you the best. I think well, that's well, a good that deal. Well, that's a funny thing, because Shao was not not competing in any... Okay, any, well, one of less. them was. One of them was. Well, that's yeah. a good thing, I suppose, yeah, you yeah, know? one of them was. He took a real liking to me and decided that he, you know, really whipped my shingy into shape. So that was... got some very good shingy basics. Very good. And, and yeah. I mean, for the people, Men Hui Feng's background... Chuo Zhao. Um, his shingy, obviously, was traditional. He yeah. really knew his shingy. Um, his Chuo Zhao is under Wu Bin Lo, right? Yeah, yeah. Wu Bin Lo, and, and very good. Because he's more well known in today's age for his Tai Chi. Yeah. And yeah. even then in the university, he was like the Tai Chi. Not, no. He, no. Not really? Chuo Zhao. His Chuo Zhao was very good. Yeah, of course. And no, he, everybody was teaching everything that they had to teach at the time. And, and like um, Chang Chen Rei was Tong Bei. Everybody had something that the Zhang Wang was Cha Chen. Yeah. That's why Xiao was doing the sparring. Right. Because that was really his thing. His thing. So everybody had to teach the Chang Chen. You know, they were responsible for their class or whatever and, mm, and, mm. and getting them through. But, uh, did you did, did you do any Chuo Zhao Fanzo with... Uh... I wasn't allowed, but I watched. There was a Why class. Why weren't you allowed? I had to do my curriculum. Ah, okay. Um, but I knew that he was teaching a class, and I went. 
and watched every single class. And there's it was a an advanced class, and they kind of it's in the curriculum. They have to do it, but it's a bit weird. And so they were kind of doing it, but not really. So they didn't and want at, to do it. At one point, he stopped. And he said, "Look, see over there." We've got a foreigner who knows how valuable this is, and has been sitting there. It's been coming in every class. It's not allowed to take it, but she's been watching. Yeah, because she knows how important this is and how valuable this is, and that you know, learn from Wu Bin Low and everything. And yeah. you guys, a bunch of slacker, no good <laughs> wastrels. And I was sitting there getting like shrinking into my <laughs> seat, uh, just absolutely reamed them out. And, uh, they, Were they giving you the hairy eyeball? Oh, man. It was like, oh, don't do this to me. It's bad <laughs> enough being a foreigner and everything without you know having this put on me as well. But he was right. They yeah, were just like, true. they couldn't have cared less. It's it like that today yeah, still, though. Yeah. Maybe even more so, unfortunately, with the average, yeah, yeah. average person. They were there to get a degree, go into coaching or teaching Chang Chen. And they had to learn the traditional stuff because it was there. Yeah. And it was it was such good stuff. Yeah. Like, like he was probably not that old, but at the time he seemed like really old. And he could still touch his, his chin to his toes yeah. like any time. Yeah. He didn't even have to ever warm up. He just like boom, there you go. You know. Did he ever teach you any Tai Chi? Don't remember. I mean, he's quite famous because he's got that Dong Yue Tai Chi. That is... yeah, no, he never taught me that. That didn't exist. At the no, time. it didn't then. Um, but obviously, he was into Tai Chi for quite a while. He researching, was into Tai Chi. Kang Wei Shang, his wife, taught me my Chen, my original Chen style. Yeah, she's a Chen specialist. Well, no. yeah, but he, he was her boss, kind of like he was the one who was really good, and she wasn't so much. Oh, ah, okay. Even though she's considered a Chen specialist, you could, you know, there's definitely a hierarchy there. Right. Um, well, I think he probably did. I don't really remember, but I, I remember classes with them. They were pretty brutal. Anything we did, it was just really, really hard. I don't I just remember the brutality of it. Not so much what we did. We have sword. I remember doing sword, having to do Dian about a billion times, and getting yelled at. Um, so just for, for, really, for the listeners, Dan is a sword tilting point. Yeah, in which here, pretty does your wrist in if you yeah, do a, a whole bunch of them, does. At, you know, and you have to you just sort of jump forward and down into the Dian and jump drop back again. Yeah, kind of thing. And I was doing that with. Sometimes I was always on my own, and and sometimes I was with a group of other the advanced students, the in the short term students, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call them. Sometimes I'd be in with them. And you, which weapons were you learning while you were there? Mostly the Chang Chuen type weapons? The, yeah, spear, staff, sword, saber. I remember bashing myself with the Sanjay Gun a bit. Yeah. How long did that last? Well, they realized that that was... <laughs> <laughs> the number of times I'd thrown it up, seen it coming at me, and just ducked. <laughs> I just go, oh, she's not going to get that. Again, for people, it's a <laughs> trisectional stuff. Yeah, so. yeah. It was but, okay as long as you don't let go of them. But once you throw it up in the air and it's spinning, there's no way I'm going to catch that thing. It's smack that side of the air. Why are we throwing all, <laughs> our weapons no, away anyway? <laughs> no, don't make me do this. So, uh, it's obvious that it's more, of a, <laughs> it's more of a hazard to the user than, yeah. than the adversary, yet we're throwing Throwing well, them and straight up in the air, having it spinning around. You're supposed to catch it, and it's not going to hit in the back of the head. <laughs> I don't think so. So uh, after a few times of that, they're like, "No more trisectional oh, stuff I for you." Survived. There was like sections. You had to do something for three months or something. Okay. To, for each thing. So there, I might have, I don't remember doing it for three months, but it's a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> you probably don't remember because you hit yourself in the head probably, so many yeah, times. Yeah. That's the part of your un, of your yeah. university time that's a haze. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Tong Bei Chen, we used to just wear everything that we owned. So you didn't hit yourself. Because <laughs> <laughs> we had to keep bashing ourselves all the time. And that was with a group, I remember. But I don't remember a whole lot of weapons. But obviously, you did the standard the curriculum. Four, yeah. yeah, the, the basic, basic four. four weapons, it's a yeah. good foundation to yeah. start with. At that time, was there anybody doing what we consider now Nanquan? Yeah. There yeah, was. Yeah, there was a Nanquan section. I don't know if I did it or not. Okay. I don't. I think I managed to weasel out of it. Cause not, it not your wasn't thing. the fan. You didn't feel like I'd screaming. I'd done proper. I'd done Nanquan before in, okay. in Canada. With what did you do? Somebody from Hong Kong. Um, well, I did Charlie Fut originally. Oh, well, that's and, continuously and I knew talking. 
<laughs> I mean, that's like talking while you're hitting somebody. You're just uh, randomly screaming words at him. You know? No, no, <laughs> no I'm, so, I'm so exaggerating. That. And the uh, the dragon, uh, what is it? The Fu Hok the. Oh, okay, that's Hunga. Yeah, that's yeah, the I've tiger that crane paired. The tiger crane paired. Yeah. Not the system so much, but that routine. You did that routine, and huh? Everybody done that routine. Okay, and you did that in Canada. Yeah. Okay, very nice. Yeah. I would imagine there's a lot of Southern in Canada. There yeah. should, there's yeah, quite yeah, a few yeah. a Southern lot of immigrants from there. Hong Kong and that, yeah. And so I'd done it with friends. Okay. So I, I just the other the non-trend didn't really interest me. So you got away from that. You got I to focus I on other things. I think I that, yeah, somehow. So um, were, were there any people that you were were students at the time that have become rather well known or that uh, are involved still in the systems today in the sport or the organization here? That you recall, I mean. No, not that. I'm sure they have all, because they're all university graduates. Yeah. They would have gone on to, mm. to be into the association. and that. Right. But or coaches or provincial coaches. Yeah. or yeah. Anybody stands out from that time no. when you were there? No. They didn't become friendly with you? Or tried to? Oh, yeah. I only had friends. Yeah, okay. I had friends, but I don't know really what to say. Those are the before the days of WeChat and... Even but actually, you do you did re, you did remind me once when I told you that Chungrong is the chairman of the technical committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, oh, one. He was one of my yeah. He was a classmate. Okay. So, yeah. Do you remember training with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a sweet guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's he's no longer in the Chinese Wushu Association. Mm. He's moved on to another department yeah. in, in sport. Yeah. He was one of my my class, not just there, but in a class of eighty. Okay. He was in that class. Yeah. I wonder who Very else nice. was from that time. I can't remember the names of the people from mm. that time. Anyway, yeah, a lot of them have moved on to... Yeah, some have emigrated. And, yeah, and moved on to... Yeah. So what was your plan? You did this for a few years, and what was you, what were you planning to do with it? Uh, my plan was to be a translator. You mean martial arts? No, right? not as martial arts, but I, as a, I thought that with teams traveling back and forth and everything, that they'd need a, a translator. translator, that kind of a thing. But Zhang Wenguang said, you've been here like the first foreigner here you stayed here for a long time you've got the degree you've got this knowledge you need to go back and teach martial arts, martial arts. so that never was that you never thought of yourself as possible i didn't want to be a martial arts teacher no okay. no i wanted to be a translator so when when you stayed here for a total of four years three years three okay yeah. three years and then when you went back that was that you just started teaching or did you um, when I went back, there was a Canadian who had come to train Wushu. Like, by, by that time, people were coming and staying for a couple of months or yeah. whatever and paying. And he invited me to go to translate for, he'd invited a coach from Shandong, Niu Hai Lu. Okay. Very good, one of the old yeah. style people. Yeah. And he had invited him to go, so he invited me to go to translate. He didn't speak Chinese? No. No, okay. So when I went back, instead of going back home, I ended up in Montreal. And, and Nihailu was there for at least two years, two or three years. Wow. Uh, and I was there training with him. Uh, he was he was super good. He was like really, really... He was like the the guys that traveled around the world in the 70s kind of doing performances. Oh, okay. So a representative kind of, the, of the, yeah, the higher like, levels. Yeah. Of... Oh, really, really, really high level. But he liked Canada. Uh, not so much, no. Interesting. I actually wanted to ask you, when you left mm. China, was it bittersweet? Did you want to stay? Was yeah, you kind of realize that you have to you have to leave or you're going to get too used to being taken care of. Oh, I see. That part of it, being taken care of. But just the charm of, of, of China, especially the time you were here, is a different place. But were you kind of happy to go home in that regard? Or... Um. Yeah, it was bittersweet, as you say, because mm. cause you're on a scholarship. Everybody, you, they tell you what to do. You don't have the right to do anything else. Uh, you, to just mindlessly go along your way training, right? And you were training six days a week, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, to, to, to leave and go back and have to make your living and, and yeah. make your own decisions. Go that. back yeah, to the real so, world, Yeah, as we call it, it was tough, but you have to realize I could have stayed another year, maybe. I'd already... The scholarship was for two years, and I managed to get an extra year. Mm. And I might have been able to sneak another year, but I realized it wasn't good for me. Okay. Yeah. So you made that conscious yeah. decision yourself. You better grow up and 
while you were here though i mean apart from training and spending time at the university i'm sure they also kept an eye on you you couldn't do everything oh, you wanted to do you, you couldn't do anything you want you no, couldn't go sightseeing i didn't want to do anything no sightseeing you needed a permit to go out of the city no we, but we i mean did. like Gukong, the forbidden oh, yeah, city yeah, yeah. and yeah, things yeah you could just jump on a bike and go sure yeah and they're not going to give you trouble no 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 okay no okay yeah so then you went back to Canada. You were you were helping at that was you what yeah, you did. Yeah, so I was yeah I was translating for Neil Hui Lu and training with him. So I had another at least two years. It might have been three of training with a really good coach, and his his long tassel sword was just beautiful. Okay. And spear his spear was beautiful and and spear is is pretty much a right handed weapon. But yeah. He could do this exactly the same with his left. Oh wow, that's Jidoxi pretty impressive. Often. No, yeah. I've never seen that. He's actually. a really amazing guy. Really Where's he now? Back here. He's a Shandong coach, so um, he must be retired. He must by be now. retired by now, yeah. But he was coaching. He was a the Shandong team coach. So you stayed, and you. This was in I don't know. Montreal. I don't, in Montreal, yeah. and the person who ran whose school this was. Uh, that was Del Denis Jelena. Still got a school going. No. No. no, no, oh. no, no. So after uh, the Shandong coach Liu came back, what did you do? Uh. I'd opened the club. Okay. By that point. Yeah, I'd opened the club by that point, so, so I stayed for a bit, and then I had a, I had a job translating for the Three Gorges project. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, they were, it was a Canadian company that was doing the turbines. No, uh, the 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 what's it called the. Uh, they hadn't started the project yet, so it was the feasibility study. Oh, okay. So feasibility the, studies. I was translating for that, which was, that's how I paid off my student loan. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> so and you had that. a club on the side, so you keep, keep your practice side, going? Yeah. yeah. Was this yeah. the Wushu Center? Yeah. Was that the it's beginning the of the Wushu Center? It's always the Wushu Center, yeah. yeah. It's the beginning yeah. of so the Wushu the, Center. So that's the beginning of the Wushu Center. And did you, in between then, did you ever come back to China? I mean, while you were working on yeah. this? Yeah. You did, up and down? Yeah. Um, well, I couldn't really afford to, because I had no money <laughs> until mm-hmm. I was working for the, the Lavalle. Um I came back for a competition. Oh, actually, I've seen photos of that competition. Yeah, and that's it, another thing I wanted to ask yeah. you. During your university time, you didn't compete. I did, actually. You did? There was okay. one that I competed in, which was the first one that was like foreign or something where was it in beijing it, no it was in was it nanjing <laughs> this, this is why you need to make, write your memoirs yeah no it was, <laughs> it was in nanjing because the nanjing team the jiangsu team were the host team okay and they were really nice and <laughs> It was the first international, anyway, so there's people from Hong Kong that didn't have a clue that are doing the usual thing. It was like, oh, they didn't understand what I was trying to do. <laughs> oh, it was really? supposed to be a wushu competition. You're not supposed to show up with just anything. You're supposed yeah. to be doing wushu. That was kind of the idea. And what were they showing up doing? Whatever. Right. Taekwondo? No, I mean, <laughs> kung fu, something like a kung fu thing. But okay. it hadn't occurred to them that it was a wushu competition. Okay, so they obviously right. were a bit upset. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh-huh. and the Americans were funny, and they were. They, I knew them because of my friend who'd been training wushu, so Roger Tong and and those guys. So there were a few on. Americans that came through. Oh yeah, yeah. Keith Hirabashi is quite, and and Roger Tong and what's it, Anthony Chen. That's probably when I, I knew Anthony Chen from before. And Anthony Chen mm-hmm. is famous, or at least within the wushu circles, yeah. for making those photos and the yeah, yeah, filming yeah. those videos of the yeah, Beijing that, team. Yeah, that we got together and I yeah, digitized yeah. and. Yeah, you digitized them. Yeah. Actually, well, that's we, how I we, found we the Wushu Center. Center. Yeah, yeah. Is because of those uh, Digitized, old Beijing yeah. team uh, yeah. instructional videos. Yeah, he put a lot into those, made no money, and then we got together and I digitized them and made no money. <laughs> and they're all over the place now. It's great. And, and nobody's uh, making any money. Nobody ever made any money. And uh, but the 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 stuff is out there, which is good, because when you see that Beijing team, yeah, it's different. That's beautiful wushu. Yeah. That's why I don't really hate modern wushu because to me, you know, that's all right. That that stuff is beautiful. Well, that's a different type. It's a different type. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, your great grandfather might have been doing something right, and the great grandson took that idea yeah, and messed yeah. it up. 
the eighties, so. the early eighties, because part of my education in wushu was getting sent to every comp- national competition to watch, so that I'd understand wushu. And so I got sent to the nationals, which are the professionals, and I also got sent to the the friendship competitions, okay. which was the amateur one. So twice a year, I had to to go and watch Wushu for like two, poor you. two weeks. Poor oh, me. poor you. Must have been hell. Yeah. That's where you, I think you must have seen the, the old greats like Xu Xiangdong. And Xu Xiangdong was so beautiful. He went actually to the university after I left. Okay. I killed myself. <laughs> <laughs> I was such a fan. <laughs> he went to, into that same program, the, that two, three year program to become a coach. So okay. That's what the retired athletes That they do. do. Yeah. And he, he went. Because I noticed that later on, um, he was competing for the team. For, yeah, for okay. The, uh, team. So during your time at the university, you got to actually go see all the all these competitions oh, yeah. and. Yeah, I was paid to go to see them. Yeah. Poor you, yeah, yeah like you said. Yeah. What stood out in your in your mind from those events? Because I think at that time they were also kind of. I mean, the sport as a sport was mm-hmm. also trying to be. It was somewhat sorting itself out. Sorted itself out at that yeah. time. It. It wasn't gymnastics. It was yeah. definitely still martial arts, but flashy. Yeah. I mean, they had the jumps and everything like that. So um, it was a solid base of the core martial arts with a bit of... And power uh, and spirit. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. The key points. Yeah. Yeah. Functionality, content and... Uh, yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, it was beautiful. Okay. Yeah. And if the in the two-man stuff, they got a little carried away with the shouting and hitting each other and that, they got talked to. Not like now, they const- they're just basically shouting non-stop from beginning to end. Yeah, it's say, it's say, that's not necessary, and you shouldn't be hitting each other, you should be blocking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, who would have thought? Yeah, any team that got a bit <laughs> carried away with the show of it, they were kind of talked to, and so right. that's not a martial art, you should be blocking. Right, right. You should, you should be countering, it should be, oh, it's okay, we know it's a show, but, you know... Well, it's supposed to be a display of attack and defense techniques and the functionality of... So it's okay to be flashy because it is a performance style. But don't forget what you're doing there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a great contrast. They were were really... The level was was so high, especially the Beijing team. They were just incredible. What do you think set them apart from everybody else? Money. (laughs) Apart from money. Because let's let's give some people without money hope out there. <laughs> You've got to have something else. <laughs> oh, they just they train really really hard, <laughs> but everybody trains. It's really like you hard. hear the the repeated <laughs> stories of no, it was the coaching and this, no, and then no, you no, ask Andrea. Money what in was terms of bribery? No, I mean no, they, no, I know they had that. the facilities. That I know what you mean. They had but. they were fed enough. They had the facilities. You could tell they had new uniforms. So we're going to go with food and money. <laughs> That's well, it's like, so we were at the sports university. Okay? Yeah. I had 160 yuan a month, half of which I spent on food. Whereas you go to Beida, they maybe, this is foreign students, yeah. maybe got 100 a month and they'd spend that on, they were eating bites high. Cabbage. Yeah. All yeah. And bread. Mantel. No, no. Yeah, bread. Mantel, steamed, bread. bread. Yeah, steamed, steamed bread. Steamed bread. I visited my friend there like once and I said, I'm not eating this stuff again. You know, Was you can come bad? and visit me <laughs> where we're eating. Chicken. <laughs> chicken. Beef. It was a Muslim kitchen oh, because okay. all of the foreigners were Muslim except me. Yeah. So we didn't even have pork to deal with. We had eggs, chicken, beef, mutton, all the vegetables, even in the winter. Sounds good. Yeah. And this wasn't just the foreign students, the whole university. But I think that being a physical because sports, we were the sports university you were, yeah you're kind of going to give so you guys tomatoes and cucumbers and expect you to the, perform the, the, the scheme for the Chinese was astronauts and pilots and sports people they get the good food they get the good food and we were just we were fit very cool. Was, yeah, and we were we were well taken care of. Well, it's a good thing they didn't try to send you into space. But, uh. <laughs> but uh, so the Beijing team, when they had enough to eat, they had good sleeping quarters. They, I mean, yeah. they lived at Shishai. They had nice dormitory. Um, good equipment. Good equipment. Like, we were just the college. Yeah. And we were issued every year a new, complete sports training outfit. And the really thick cotton, you know, like really, really good equipment. Nice. You walk in and say, okay, you're going to need a saver. And you walk into the room and say, okay, pick one. 
right? And say, okay, that'll be my saber. I still have that saber. And Chang Zhang Lei came to teach a seminar and I brought it along because I thought they might be short of saber. And he kind of, oh, that's a nice saber. And he, yeah, back then. It's different to the ones they, made, yeah. they make now. Yeah, they're not so flimsy now. Even the even, ones that I had from like yeah. the late 90s. Not so good, no. Well, they're better than what you got now. I mean, yeah, when, yeah, I was still, yeah. when I was still training to compete like 12 years ago, mm. I'd break a broadsword in two sessions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's even worse. Yeah. Yeah, so... No, it's still got that. I mean, I don't beat it around as much as you do, I'm sure. But, yeah. Um, no, yeah. that's just it. I mean, the equipment, the food, this, the, just the living standard. And theirs would have been higher than ours because we were just for coaching. Yeah, and they were the, the cream of the crop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it does make a and difference. And good coaches. Well, they, they had, had money also good. helps you get yeah. access to coaches. They had really good coaches. And when they had, in those days, there were six events. Uh, so they had traditional events that they had to do, and they would go and they would, being in Beijing, they had access to the best people. Because, I mean, face it, yeah. if you're a good martial artist you know, in Beijing, so they, if they had to do Bagua, they went straight to Sun Jun and said, yeah. okay, show us Bagua. Yeah. You know, they came up to Zhang Wangguang, show us Cha Chuan. Yeah. You know, what yeah. should we be doing? Um, well, there's a lot of really good teachers in Beijing, as it is in yeah. any case. Yeah. So. yeah. They so, had access to them as well. Yeah. So, but yeah. no, they had really good coaching. It's a good living standard. Uh, Did you ever get a chance to interact with all, any of those traditional masters around Beijing while you were still at the... I never even thought of it. Yeah. And it would have been hard in any case. It would you. have been hard, but I mean, we were... I was training every day. Yeah. Anyway. And in those days, you didn't know about all these styles. I mean, I had never heard of Shingi or Bagua or even Chan style. Right before going there. So it would never occur to me to go and look for somebody better than who I was training with already. Mm. My teachers were very good. So. When you went back to Canada and you were training with uh, the guy who was teaching from Shandong, mm -hmm. um, and you carried on training, and then you opened the Wushu Center, mm -hmm. you had learned this Bagua that you, you, you learned from Sha Bo Hua. Mm -hmm. Was that still, was that at that time one of your key practices or was it not really the main focus? It wasn't, I don't think. And I'm not, it wasn't really like Jiang style because before, when I later was training in Shanghai, I remember teaching my students that. And one guy, oh, I really like this. It doesn't have any kicks. So I must have been doing something different <laughs> before then. Yeah. That had more kicks in, in the Bagua. I don't really remember what it you, was. You so mean Xia Bohua's Bagua had a lot of kicks in it? It had kicks in it because I remember, I just remember my student going, oh, I like this Bagua way better. Cause That's quite interesting. It would be interesting to find out exactly what it was. Do, yeah. do you remember it? No. Oh. I could ask him. I'll try and get hold of him this yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. Try. Yeah, yeah. that would be good. Yeah. Good to find out what he taught you. That would mm. be really interesting. And if you let me know, I'll put it in the notes, <laughs> the show notes, mm. just, just out of interest. Mm. Um, but how did you, because I mean, you're more well known in today's time for your teaching and practice of Bagua and Xingyi mm. than, mm. than uh, well, Chang Chuan or Cha Chuan or those mm. other things. How did you slowly get more in, involved into that line of practice? Well, because I hurt my shoulder. Right. Then I got to specialize in, in the but internal when, styles. But when you were back in Canada. No, I mean, before I'd left China. I know, China, that was here. Was in Canada, yeah. But then so you came back to switched. Canada and you were helping the trans translator of the coach from Shandong. Was he teaching you Xing and Bagua or not really? Um, he was a Chang Chuan coach, but there was no way for me. Uh, he was also teaching Tai Chi, just, you know, because... Standardized you do, stuff. You do, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I would be doing that with him. Um, we did the long task of sword. I think I mostly did Tai Chi with him. Okay. Yeah. And, and from there, what did you... How did you continue with your martial journey? You opened up the Wushu Center, you started teaching and practicing, mm -hmm. continued. And I went to Shanghai for my training. Why Shanghai? In one of the uh, national, the friendship competitions, the amateur ones, I'd made friends with a guy from Shanghai. Okay. Who did the weirdest Chun style Tai Chi hmm. I've ever seen. What was weird about it? It's just weird. <laughs> it's. Uh, you know, weird when you see weird, you don't have yeah, to be able to yeah. describe weird. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty weird. So I'd made friends with him and started going to Shanghai. Um, like in school break kind mm -hmm. of thing. I'd go down to Shanghai. And then after I'd graduated and could just go wherever I wanted to, then I he introduced me to his teacher. And I became a, a disciple of his teacher. 
So are you saying that it was weird, good weird? Good weird. Ah, okay. Lovely weird. It's fabulous. It's it's way better than any chan style I've other chan style. I'd never do another chan style. Okay. It's 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 just great. Was he it's from one of the universities or no, just No, no, he's just, a worker. Just a worker who decided to participate. Well, no. I mean, he he's in the worker peasant family, so he was a worker, but because his wushu was so good because he's been practicing since he was six, but traditional stuff. Yeah. He was on the wushu team of the factory. Ah. So before any competitions, he was given like three months off for training. Oh, lucky. This is talking about old China here. Yeah. And then before a nationals, I mean, he'd be on the he'd be on the city's worker team, and he'd he'd just you know that would be it. He'd get months and months off for training. Very cool. And then come and compete. In this is a friendship competition. It's yeah, not yeah. even a you know full on competition. So he was training with the same teacher from young. He, he was he was he. He was training with uh, Huang Dahai. Okay. And that's I went when I went to Shanghai after I'd graduated. Can be good. Became a disciple of Huang Dahai and mm-hmm. trained the Chen Taiji. Yeah, I've okay. seen, I've I've spoken to you, but I've also mm-hmm. seen in some of your people can see it when they buy your books mm-hmm. or when they read about you, your biography. Uh, you mentioned Huang Dahai, mm-hmm. and uh, so that's when you. What year was that when you when you started training with him? Officially, probably ninety, I guess. Okay. I'd been going to Shanghai in the eighties already. I don't think I was actually a disciple till I went. In. But you were training with him already. With with Tsaiwa, I'd go and I'd visit Tsaiwa. I don't think I was training with Sifu. Okay. I think uh, I'm not very good with memory. Of the old days. Memoirs. <laughs> like a, a whole other person. You need like to put this to paper. Else. Sooner the better. <laughs> it happened to somebody else. Um, I was going to Shanghai. I was training with Tsaiwa. And. I think I probably became a disciple in ninety when I was there in ninety mm. and training with uh, with Sifu every day. Huang Dahai. Yeah, Huang Dahai. And what was his background? He's a cop. Okay. Always in Shanghai. Did he learn yeah. everything in Shanghai yeah. himself? He's a Shanghai a real and Shanghai guy. What was he learning? What was his style? I mean, Chen's Tai Chi. Chen style Tai Chi. Yeah. Where did he get it from? Uh, that's. Complicated. Oh, okay, one of those. <laughs> one of those, yeah. It's a complicated lineage, um, and I'm always forget names. I'm not one of these people that pops out all these mm. names. Chen Fakir's father is who? Chen Yanshi. I think. I can't recall off the top of my head. So Chen Yanshi was very good, and he would be invited outside the village to teach. Um, Yuan Shikai, who was the president, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. before he was president, he was kind of warlord. Yeah, he was a warlord. He invited Chen Yanshi because he did appreciate very good martial artists. Yeah. He had quite a few very good martial yeah. artists at his various camps before he was president. Yeah. His son is the one that actually, we think, is the one that spread our lineage to where it got to in Shanghai. Yuan Shikai's son? Yes, well, that's very interesting. Yeah, but that's why Sifu didn't like to talk about it because yeah. Yuan Shikai's a bad guy. Yeah, his son's really not any better. Yeah, but so it came from Chen Yanshi, but from outside the village, when he was in in these centers with a bunch of very good martial artists. Mm. From what research I've done, and his it's attributed then to Yuan Shikai's son Yuan. Could thing I want to say that, but it's probably wrong. Don't recall his son's yeah. name either. Yeah, I have it all written down somewhere. I'm sure at that time as well, and yeah. it was really taboo to talk about. Yeah, or yeah, be so, associated so you had to with really, these people. You, we had to really convince Sifu to tell us that that's what the lineage okay. was. Okay. Yeah. That's really interesting that it yeah. came through there. Yeah. So and it's from outside the village, but from Chen Yanshi, as far as I know. And this was he only did Chen style. Is that what he, he, he learned you? with Zhang Wenchao as well. Oh, so he's got the Bagua side He's got the Bagua as well. And we did some Bagua with him, but I mostly did the Chen style. And were you attracted yeah. to Chen Taiji before this? I'd done it in Beijing as part of my... Curriculum. Curriculum mm-hmm. and that. And, and, and um, I did a lot of it, but it, I, it wasn't the same. This is beautiful stuff. You know, it was that was sort of work. Like when you're... a Paid to learn something, it's, it's your not job, the same, yeah. right? It's not the same. And you do it, and you don't think whether you like it or not. Kind of, you—that's what you do. It's your job. 
Yeah. Um, but I obviously must have liked it because I did it for a long time. But once you've introduced something else, it's like, oh man, why did I do that other stuff? You just it's gone. <laughs> you just never never think of it again. It's kind of like me when I started with Shingy. Mm-hmm. It's like that was it. My whole world just yeah. became Shingy. Yeah. Yeah. So. Whereas this is um, much more natural. It's not for performance or anything. It's a very natural style and and very very spacey as well. Some in some. Spacey as in time taking space. up space or <laughs> as, as in time space, space man space. As in the time space continuing. Ah, that, okay. Uh, lose track of, of what's happening. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. But did, so your fir- the first time you saw this was when the student of his performed at that yeah. competition. So yeah. something attracted you to the style right there and uh, then. No, it's it's him. For some reason, he never he, like he doesn't. He's not the kind of guy that goes up and says hello to a foreigner. Yeah. But he did. Oh, interesting. And I'm not the kind of person that would say hello back to yeah. some guy that's coming to bother me to yeah. practice his English, which right. he wasn't doing, but but I said hi back. And we just made friends. Okay. And then from there you and got... And then from there you go, whoa, this guy's really good. Yeah. You know, his bagua is really good too. You know? And he's actually a really accomplished artist is what his main thing is. But he's been training, he's done martial arts his whole life. He's very, very good. So then you started coming to Shanghai and training. Training with him, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you managed to start training with Juan Da Hai himself? He introduced, he introduced me to yeah. is, is, teacher, yeah. is he still teaching, the student? Does he, did yes, he teach? Yes, he teaches in Switzerland. Oh my. He yeah. ended up all the way there. As an artist. And then... He was yeah. a factory worker who was a, a martial artist worker. who went to Switzerland as an artist. It's it's pretty amazing, like it is. But the obviously, there's an under, adaptability. The, this guy is. I don't know if it's incredible. so much adaptability. Maybe his proficiency in martial art is created to a cre- is connected to a creative spirit, which is part of art. You know, maybe he was just a natural artist. He's so. just he's just wonderful, and he does twina as well. Very good twina. Okay. So he he made friends with me. He's also made friends with other foreigners, and I, obviously a Swiss. Yeah. And started going to Switzerland as an artist, but teaching the Tai Chi there as well. What kind of art? Chinese traditional art. Okay. Like, you know, mountains and flowers and stuff. Yeah. His calligraphy is very good too. Would be, yeah. 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 So all my little notebooks he's done is calligraphy on the front cover for Oh, me. very cool. Yeah. You still got all of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, if your memory keeps going, just uh, start looking <laughs> I've got through my those. Notebooks, but my <laughs> notebooks are all just techniques. So yeah. 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 And what was it like training with Juan Da Hai? Uh, you get there probably, I think, six in the morning or something. You had to be finished before the, the riffraff came into the park, right? Yeah. Uh, so I think we were finished by seven. We are probably getting there at 5.30 or yeah. some stupid thing yeah. like that. And um, turning with him, he'd sort of show up more or less same time as us, and then people would give him something to eat and some cigarettes and that, and he'd thunk himself down and have his smoke and... Traditional Munch Chinese martial arts vitamins, cigarettes. Cigarettes and his big bottle of Fanta and you know, some <laughs> buns and things. And then, um, every once in a while, he'd, he'd correct you in that. And, uh, yeah, the good traditional, good good traditional, traditional training, way. Good traditional training, yeah. yeah. Not overcorrection because he'd say, if you'd ask him something, he'd say, well, I can tell you again. And then it'll still be mine. Oh. Or you can figure it out yourself, and then it's yours. Oh, okay. So at first I thought he was just maybe a bit lazy on the teaching, but I realized he was... I mean, later on you realize, oh, he's, he's so right. You know, yeah. If you figure it out yourself, like just work on it a bit, figure it out. If you still can't figure it out, then ask him again. Yeah. But you could usually figure it out. And coming from the university where... It had to be like that exactly. If you say how high is that, they'd say how high that was. Mm, how many degrees and which yeah, angle? Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And you say, where is this hand supposed to be? And he'd sort of take your hand and he kind of move it around a bit and say, how does it feel there? And you move it. You know, how does it feel there? How does it feel there? I mean, it's your body, right? Well, that's the, that's one thing yeah. that I liked about uh, Di Goyong's teaching. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's, it's like, all about it's feeling. It's your body. Yeah. yeah, it's where you're right, where yeah, your yeah. lineup comes in, how how it works for you yeah. within rules. Right, within right. the set yeah. parameters. Yeah, not, yeah. You know. within rules. Yeah. I mean, you're still in that posture, but you say, well, you've got to find it yourself, find the lines in that, and then if you're still way off, I mean, he'll tell you. Yeah. That, uh, Were there a lot of people training? I mean, mm, regularly? 
Not really, no. He didn't have a a big group. Maybe six of us, maybe. Okay. There weren't a lot. They, they just disciples. Most of them didn't come and practice with them anymore. They'd already learned sort of the whole thing. I was his last disciple. Right. I was his youngest and his last, and his only foreigner, obviously, and the only woman. The only woman as well, huh? Yeah, for a disciple. Yeah, yeah we've been teaching, with yeah. him, learning with him, but not, not as a not disciple. A, okay. So that's another of those influences. He says, well, you're the, you know, you're my most educated disciple, and and you're the foreigner, and you're the one that's going to be able to write this down. So that's another one of those. Was that when you started actually doing more writing, or was it because of any any connection to that? or um, No. I didn't, I wasn't writing by then. You weren't? No. Okay. But you actually haven't, you haven't published anything about Juan de Haas uh, Tai Chi at all. You will. I will. I will. There's that that guilt complex working on it. Okay. So that's going to come out. Yeah. And your memoirs are going to come out. Well, that's the same thing. Okay. Good. So um, are you going to write it while you can still remember it? <laughs> I'm say it's like it happened to a different person. It's, it's not memory. It's like what? What was that? I don't don't really don't remember it. But yeah. I know I was there. And when did you were training with him for? How long? From when to when? Uh, Ninety till. Because I had no money then. Ninety mm. six. I think after ninety six, I had no money until. The next time I went to China, it was quite a long time. Mm. It was a long, long stretch. I just couldn't go. Yeah. Because uh, I was just teaching martial arts. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. not a road to becoming a wealthy person. No, it's not. So. No, it's not. So he, he's passed on, obviously. 2015, yeah. Okay. He's 90-some-odd. And had you learned his entire base of knowledge or no because our chance taiji is supposed to have seven routines seven seven yeah and i know one three and the taiji chang chan who is counted as one of our seven but actually comes from jango and chao so it's not but oh interesting you know so what 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 is the curriculum i mean compared to your standard chen style curriculum most have the the first and second yilu erlu yeah yeah and then weapons right okay some have xinjia some people do yeah, Xinjiang. Yeah, Xinjiang, Laojiang, yeah, and all yeah. that stuff. We have Ilu. Uh, the the Pauche is still there, but I don't know it. And Sanlu. Uh, si, Liu, like, yeah. but is there anybody else that has those? No, not that I know of. That he be... said there's a group in Taiwan, apparently, that's very similar, that, that does what we do. They might have it. I wonder what happened to all of that content. But that's just it, because nobody seems to know it all. Yeah. He says that it's there, but nobody knows it, kind of thing. Do you think I learned Chen, three. Chen Fako, do you think he knew it? I don't know, because say it came, it came out from his father like earlier. Yeah, I mean that's earlier. That earlier. is, that's an earlier. So who mm-hmm. knows what and where and how? Somebody, somebody said that they had showed an old lady at Chan Village our third form, and she said, "Oh, that looks familiar." I, really? I have seen that. Okay. But she didn't practice it, but she is an older woman. She said, yeah, she, she'd seen it. So you know the third form? Yeah. And has, have you seen anything that looks like it? No. And it's, how? it's short, short techniques, elbows and knees and spinning and stuff. Okay. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, people have, in today's day and age, especially since the explosion of the Chen style through the Chen village and... Yeah the push to, you know, standardize and whatever. They mm. think that the curriculum is literally that's all known and that's it, no. you know. So no. this is another perspective. It's quite interesting. Yeah. Another reason to write that book. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, the Tai Chi Chang Tran, for some reason, was counted in the curriculum, but yeah. it, isn't. it isn't in that lineage. It's from Zhang Wang Chao, direct. And where did Zhang Wang Chao get it? Don't. He got it from... His friend, Tang Shilin, who got it from, I'm going to say the wrong name, because I always get the name mixed up, the Xingyi guy, Gogumin? Gogumin is our Bagua guy. Okay. I told you I was going to get it wrong. Liang Jun Pu student. Guan Shen. Ah, okay. Uh, 
that his friend Tang Shilin trained with somebody that trained with anyway it's one of those okay one of those but it, is it connected from the Chen no, line no, oh okay it's something no. something I don't know separate. why it counted as one of the things that we we did but it's it's quite separate from it's separate from the Bagua and it's separate from the Tai Chi lineage but it comes from Jiang Wan Chao and it's called Chang Chuan Tai Chi Chang Chuan Tai Chi Chang Chuan yeah Hmm. And I learned that with Chang Jie Feng, because Sifu knew it, but Chang Jie Feng was better. Okay. Chang Jie Feng is his top student. His still top around? Center. Yeah, still around. I still. You still go through to him. Oops, we've just had a small table malfunction, but no big deal. So yeah, you still go through to him. So I trained with him in Shanghai. I was down there this last weekend. I'm going next weekend. Okay. How old is he now? He is. Probably seventy. Seventy. Yeah. Okay. So he's not. He's not a. He's not no, no. He's not that old. He's, yeah. He's in good shape. And he's been teaching, like uh, the since. His, well, for how long has he been teaching? I'm just give you that. He he taught at the uh, Chinese Traditional Medicine University. Yeah. That was his job. Now he's retired. So he's, he's a also, he's doctor. always been teaching Tai Chi and Qigong and stuff because that's part of his, his job, aside from of the, course. the medical part. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's very, very much into the Qigong and the Tai Chi he knows. He's like an encyclopedia of Qigong and Tai Chi. Interesting. You never know what he's going to practice when he shows up in the morning and you just try and get in your questions. <laughs> but his, his uh, I mean, his Qigong curriculum is not from Huan Da Hai, it's from various sources? No, no, he, he's trained with different people. Okay. Yeah. So he, he's the he's the person, and are you still? I mean, is he? Are you still going through the whole curriculum? I no, mean, no. I just want to get my Taiji Changchun right. Ah, this, okay. This, you know, I'm not. There's just too much. To you're learn not. To you're know. not looking to learn Pao Chui or Lu. I don't think he'd teach it. He'd Why? say he'd forgot it. Really, he doesn't really practice it. <coughs> I, I haven't seen him practice it. Oh. Uh, his. Chen Tai Chi, like our for our style, we mostly do ilu. That's that's kind of what we do. Mm. And when we do it, it, it's you know thirty forty minutes. It's not you're not yeah, done in no ten joke. minutes yeah. that you're looking for something else to do. Yeah, if you've yeah. done ilu, you're kind of you're done. You're done for the day. Yeah. yeah, and so it's not something that nobody in the lineage really wanted to do all those other routines mm. particularly. Mm. Tsai Yuan knew number three. He showed it to me. He taught it to me. Uh, I'm sure Chen Feng probably knows stuff but he's just not that interested i mean he's retired and he's teaching for fun he doesn't take any money or anything mm. and uh, he's just i show up because he did teach me the tai chi chang chuan he kind of you can guilt him into correcting it uh, okay <laughs> right? okay but that's about as far as it's gonna go okay yeah and i just really want to get that one right it's a beautiful, it feels really good to do. How often do you come back to Shanghai? You try once a year, right? Well, now I have this this visa that's good for 10 years. So I've mm. been trying to come every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I see you every time you come through Beijing yeah. and you do the same thing, you go to Shanghai. Yeah, I try to go both. Yeah. So you, you started training with Huan Da Hai. And uh, how did you start getting into uh, the other branches of Bagua that you, you got into? Please don't tell me you don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Let's at least remember that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've done the Chung or Jiang or something at university. I did the Jiang in Shanghai. I came to Beijing in 2001 for some reason. Why do that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> And this guy that does Magui style, Li Bahua, Li contacted Bahua, yeah. me because I was, at, by that time, a translator. Yeah, I wanted to get into that about your, your book I, translation. I didn't publish it to, to, until 2000. Yeah. When I finally got enough together to, to s publish. So. So your first. And we didn't even have websites, particularly. I don't know. He somehow got in touch with me. But all the way from me. this side of the world? Just yeah, out of the blue? I, yeah. Uh, and just wanted to meet me or teach me or 
probably thought that whatever I was doing, it couldn't possibly be as good as what he was doing, so he wanted <laughs> to show me. Uh, well, that's a, that's a sure recipe for success. Just, you know, blind calling someone, saying, hey man, I got something to teach you better than what you're doing. I'm over on this side of the world. <laughs> so. But for some reason, I was going to Beijing anyway. I can't, I don't even know why, because I, I wasn't training with Digo Young at that point. I didn't mm. meet him till then, 2001. Okay. So your fir- but, but you just mentioned your first publication, which was, was 2000. 2000. Which yeah, was, was what? 2000. Uh, Li Tianji, I think. The Skill of Xing Yi Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that was your first book that you... That was the launching of your TGL. Maybe, maybe. It could have been Zhang Rongchao. So the Yan De Hua, I did them all sort of at the same, same time. time. They all came out in 2000, kind of. That's right. But I think I was the first one I was working on was Li Tianji. And I, I like in the beginning, oh, on the front page of that book, you've got a, a signed uh, letter from Li Tianji. He, he'd you. written that for me. He liked me for some reason. And when we were at the Nationals and everything, when I had to go to the Nationals, mm. he took a liking to me and he sort of took care of me and he introduced me to people and, and that. And, uh, Very nice. And so he'd written that for me in a book or something. Anyway, he'd written that for uh-huh. me because he wanted to encourage me to... Keep pursuing, keep, keep pursuing, yeah. keep teaching and whatever, yeah. yeah. And so I knew he'd be happy that I, I that was the first book because I was trying to get it before he passed away and yeah. I didn't manage it. Oh, yeah. okay. I just, just missed. So when did you actually start deciding to do the, the translations? I was, it would have been in the 90s that I was working on it already. Just, was that a, like something you decided to do or just something that happened just naturally? I think you figured out by this point that I don't really decide if bad things all yeah, that well. Yeah, I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, just, go with, we'll go with option B then. <laughs> yeah, that I just started to translate because that's, well, that's what I should be doing. Right? Yeah. Just translating yeah. stuff. Yeah. Especially yeah. within your skill set. So. I like to translate people that I know, things that things that I know by people that I know okay. if I can. Yeah, yeah I've noticed yeah. that. Except for the Yen De Hua, because that's right. such a cute book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I just giggle every time I work on it. I just... <laughs> That's just I thought that people should have that book. Yeah, that was the logo of your yeah, logo of your school. My, yeah. One of the it the still main, is. Yeah. It still is. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is is your is your Wushu Center school still still operational? No. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, I still go around teaching. You do. Uh, yeah, I do. But do I you have a core group of people still in Canada that I've train got, regularly? Yeah, when I'm at home, there are people, but I don't have a, an official club okay. sort of thing. I'm not looking for new students or anything like that. So you've got some people that have I've been training for a while. You yeah. still get together when yeah. you're there and you, yeah. they train yeah. outside, inside, outside, wherever. Outside. outside. I, think. I tried inside, didn't like it. Well, it's the same that yeah. we're used to here, yeah. you know? Yeah, we're just it's used an outdoor to. sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the reason why I got back into the books, even though we yeah. were talking about Li Bahu, yeah. is because you said it was kind of an overlap between that period. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so he contacted you, Li Bahu contacted mm-hmm. you, and he just said, I've got to te- I want to teach you some Bagua. Yeah. And you thought this was a great idea. I thought, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, he's a super friendly guy, and his Bagua is actually pretty good. But how did you yeah. know about his Bagua at that point? I didn't, point? he showed didn't. me. He said, this is, this is what I do. He but he sent you an email. Did we have emails in those days? I guess we must have. Well, you're still unclear about how he contacted you, but it wasn't he in must person. Have, yeah, no, no, he would have sent me an email, but I don't even. Why was I going to China in 2001? I guess maybe because I hadn't been there for a while, but that doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Sometimes it does. That kind of does, you know. So, <laughs> especially in your field, it, it, I think it makes more sense than not, you know. So, so he happened to be in Beijing at that time. He, yeah, he's from. He lives in. Yeah. He, at, that teacher, time he at that living. time, he was still. At that time, he was a teacher at the at a university in Beijing. Yeah. What was he teaching? He's an engineer. Engineer. Okay. Okay. So you met him here, and he showed you some of his bagua. Yeah. yeah. And you enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's powerful stuff. So, for the people that don't know, what what kind of bagua is it? What was different about it? What was the? Uh, uh, it's Magwe's bagua, and the the. It's all about whole body power. Yeah. So it's not just a question of coordinated body power or whatever going mm. through the body, but really solid whole body power. So the basic training of it is a very, very set circle walking 
that that connects and strengthens the tendons all the way through the body from the feet right, right through the body but you've done other circle walking you've yeah. done other bagua what's different yeah. about this that you could summarize or explain uh the intensity of it sort of like weight lifting for your tendons from the bottom up how so you're grabbing with your feet ankles which all connects up through through your knees up from the ground so you it's it's just sort of everything's coming through from the ground and the connection and the intensity of it 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 sorts out your problems is what it does so i at that time that's what it was i tell me i came into beijing but i was heading for shanghai but i had sciatica so badly i ended up staying with friends and just getting treatment oh uh, that i couldn't really walk and so he taught me the circle walking he was teaching me other things but i just couldn't anymore i had to stop all I had really to practice was the circle walking, and um, that pretty much fixed my problems. Sciatica gone. Yeah. Uh, it you know not right away, but uh, when I went back to Canada, that's what I went. Obviously, back with. yeah, it took some time. And, and circle walking, and and not just gone, but a very strong back. Okay, yeah. and compared to what most people are used to with Bagua's uh, circle walking. Mm-hmm. Do you use Tang Ni Bu? Do you yeah, use it's a, a short step walk. It's a short step, short walk. step walk. And uh, were you practicing like with a fixed upper body posture, yeah, similar to what yeah. we do in the, Liang style? The hands down one, yeah. Just okay, yeah. only one posture. Yeah. Okay. We call it bear walking, but it's the hands down posture. Okay, yeah. so Cha Chen Zhang. Yeah. So okay, interesting. Yeah. And is it done at a high speed, at a low? low no, s- slow. So slow. it's very slow. Yeah, but it's not just slow, slow. It's slow. Um, so it's slow, 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 controlled, and then an accelerating kick, and then a grab of the ground. Okay. So you slow, 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 control, accelerating kick, grab the ground. How so, long, I mean, how many steps? Do you have a set amount of steps in a circle? No, Not really. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But it, I, I suppose it would take quite a while to do, at that speed and method, to do numbers of circles, right? Yeah, you just put go by time. Don't yeah, bother to yeah, count. Yeah, you don't you count. Manage to count. <laughs> And how, how often or how long were you doing walking for on a daily basis? About 40 minutes a day. And that would be like a warm-up, right? No, that would be it. That would be it. That, that, they didn't really know anything else. Okay. And, and I practiced my other stuff, kind of, or whatever, <laughs> yeah. Whatever I could do with with my back. And you you carried on training with him after your back and everything was... Oh, yeah. I mean, once, once you've fixed things, you realize that that's very valuable training, mm. right? I mean, if you if you've managed to injure everything in your body with your martial arts training your whole life, and all of a sudden you get a training that fixes that, you kind of want to know more about it. Right. right. Yeah. So you carried on training with him. Yeah. He stayed in Beijing at that time, or in? Yeah, he was still he was in Beijing for quite a while while I was still training with him. Yeah. So compared to most Bagua systems, what would you say uh, in terms of content and me- we we spoke mm-hmm. a little bit about method, but in terms mm-hmm. of content, what's different mm-hmm. with? Uh, uh, the eight postures that most of when we're doing circle walking, we walk in eight postures. Yeah. For the Magway system, each posture is a an animal that has its own power. Right? Okay. So when you're walking in the in the bear posture, you would learn eight changes with the bear's kind of power, the the way the bear that thing moves. Okay. And if you're doing dragon walking, which is the, the millstone pushing walking, then you do eight changes the way that moves, the way that feels, the way everything with the spirit fits together with that of the dragon. Okay. So for each of the eight, there's eight So there's changes. eight times eight, there's 64. Changes. Changes. Yeah. changes and each yeah. animal has eight changes. Yeah. Okay. And they're, they're very specific to that animal, so it's not... When, when you do that, we don't walk just in eight different postures. You're going to walk in one posture, and then when you're going to do, say, the, the dragon, you're going to walk in dragon for a long time to fix the dragon kind of in your body, what, mm-hmm. it, what it is, what it feels like, and then you do the eight changes for the dragon. Mm-hmm. So we only walk, we do bear walking all the time, and then we do one other if you're going to do those changes. Wow. And was that, that's the core? Yeah, that's the core. And is there more? I mean, there's lots. Yeah, there's always so, lots. So more. it's such a big system, yeah, then. Yeah. So, in a day, it's 
what do you expect it i mean you would you focus on something as a a core that you do every day and then you bear walk bear walking okay. yeah you do your bear walking and then you you're going to practice a change do you have the straight line drills like a lot of styles have the straight line drills any similarity to for example Liu De Quan's st- straight line stuff uh, just just like one technique what I mean is you do one technique straight line ah okay one so like Xing Yi like doing PPP. well I mean other Bagua has that too, yeah it too, has it too yeah 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 too. just you know you do the technique and you turn around and come back right and those those kind of drills different stepping drills triangle stepping yeah just different stepping drills with different techniques so we do those quite a bit and there's partner a lot of partner stuff and then there's weapons there's weapons I didn't really learn them Right. When you do the lion changes, then you can just take the saber and and just do the lion changes with the saber. When you do the single hook changes, then you can do the, the yuan yang yue with the, with the single hook changes. Okay, right? okay. So and it's, then they it's... have the seven star stick, Yeah. which I did learn some, but not really properly. I mm. forgot it like immediately. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, you, how long did you train Magwe's? For. Well, I still train it. You still train it, but uh, yeah, um, under with, with, uh, with Lee, Lee for a good ten years. Okay. Yeah. And are you teach? Are you teaching Magwe yeah, still? Yeah, I do actually still teach it to okay. the people that want to learn. It. Anybody that has done other styles of Bagua that started doing Magwe with you? Everybody, like the people that like it the best, are the people who have done something. Okay. Uh, judo people, Aikido people, other Bagua people. I've kind of noticed that about about Bagua though. It seems yeah. to gel well with people that have some sort of a base in in, yeah. in martial but arts it's, in general. It's, it's the healing the injuries thing, and the suddenly having a lot more power than you ever had before thing. Right. Which is comes with the magwe training. Okay. And uh, so say I had a judo Canadian champion, kind of really high level judo guy, and had stopped doing judo because of injuries. Uh, did the magwe. Just the circle walking. Yeah. Went back to judo, is now teaching and competes at master's level. Wow. And get people, like Aikido people, and then they'll say, wait a sec, you're doing something else now. All of a sudden their power has changed. They're much more stable. They're, right. You know, and connected. And, yeah. yeah. The judo guys, he's still, still doing bagua yeah. as well? Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Keep, he, every once in a while he, he gets lazy and stops but then he's, his knee starts to hurt again <laughs> he has to go back to it so he's keen again well that was like yeah. my, my thing when I started mm-hmm. training with, with, with Di Go Yong I had mm-hmm. knee surgeries mm-hmm. and he's the first few months he just taught me some Kung Fa that he yeah. has yeah. just fix the knees fix yeah. the knees and I found yeah. that if I don't do it every day at yeah. least yeah. but uh, if, if a bit of then my knees start to hurt yeah. like before when I was traveling so much for for work with the mm-hmm. Wushu Federation, mm-hmm. that there would be periods that I just had no time to train, and then I start feeling it in my yeah, knees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't, so, you can't. Your back and knees, you can't pretend they're better. Yeah, yeah. They, it's a constant maintenance yeah. of yeah. what they are. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so constant, constant. For me, it's circle walking is enough. So when you were training with with Lee, you were also training in Shanghai. So you'd had pretty busy times of. Uh, I don't think I was training in Shanghai when I was training. Ah, okay. Because I, I, because again of the no email kind of thing, I'd lost contact with Chan Jie Fang yeah. and Tsai Hua after 96, the last time I was in Shanghai. Ah, okay. I yes, you mentioned. I couldn't find either of them. And Tsai Hua was a very good friend. I couldn't couldn't find him. That whole, the Shanghai was completely, you know, keep taking it down, building things, take it down, build things. So yeah. People just got lost. And you just you couldn't go back to their house. Right. It wasn't there anymore, right? You couldn't just drop in and find them again. So how did you get back gone. in contact with them? I, because of my website, somebody and I, I just kept posting like I'm looking for these people. Yeah. So a Swiss person got a hold of me, and said, oh. "Iowa, it's Iowa. Yeah, he teaches us. We know where he is. We'll get you in touch." And so I got back in touch with oh, him. That's interesting. And Chen Jie Feng, somebody... Who says the internet's useless? It's, t- it's not. <laughs> somebody in <coughs> Seattle or something said, oh, you, you know Chen Jie Feng? Well, I was just in Shanghai training with him. I said, well, you're kidding. So, so she gave me the park where they trained. Interesting. The times and said, well, just go. That's really good. Yeah. I mean, that's that's just the the, yeah. the beauty of being connected. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Getting Identity back theft Fung. aside, this is a good yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a good thing to get <laughs> yeah. back with Chandra Fung. So it was only a couple of years ago, 
2015, I guess. I guess. Wow. Right, that I got back with with both of them. And, yeah. And met up again, and, and and that's just because of people seeing that I posted on my website somewhere mm -hmm. like this is who I trained with. I have no idea where they are. And you went from, I mean, obviously training, teaching, and you got mm -hmm. into publishing books, which are quite well mm -hmm. for, well known for it, these mm -hmm. translations. And you mentioned earlier that you like to generally translate books on subjects you're familiar with mm -hmm. and generally written by people you know. Mm -hmm. So from the books you translated, we spoke about the first group of books, which were Zhang Rong Chao's book. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's a style that you're familiar yeah, with. Did, yeah, and did. then Yen De Hua's, which is uh, just cute. Just cute. <laughs> and Li Tianji, which is uh, like, somebody you knew. I knew. And, and a style that you're style, familiar. Hebei style. Hebei style. Hebei of Xing Yi Chuan. So how did you, and, and the, the next books that you worked on, were, how did you get in contact with, with him? I, I got in contact Di with, Di, so the listeners know, the, with, I got in contact, <laughs> yeah, I got in contact yeah. with Digo Young through you. Yeah. So how did you get in contact and why him? Uh, that again is due to the sciatica. Ah. That I <laughs> God bless sciatica. Huh? God bless sciatica. I was in Beijing, staying at a friend's house with absolutely nothing to do and couldn't train. All I could do was go to my treatment and then come back and mm. lie down. So I picked up some videos. Okay. Normally I as don't. one does. As one does. Normally I don't. I'm not a video person. Yeah. Happened to get Di Yong's videos. His Xing Yi trend wow, instructionals. This is good Xing Yi. Yeah. This is clear. This is beautiful. Yeah. I'd like to translate this. But did you know he had books at that time? No. No, you were talking about the DVDs. I was talking about the DVDs. This guy is good. He is clear. This this would be cool to translate. I Why? What was wrong with the beautiful subtitles that came on the DVD? <laughs> it's garbage. It's complete garbage. The subtitles on the DVDs were hilarious. Yeah. So I somehow somehow found out where he was, got a number. Maybe I called Shabohua or something. Yeah, Shabohua would asked, know him. Yeah, and asked, like, who is this guy? And he said, oh, he's going to be at a meeting, some Wushu meeting at such and such place at such and such a time. You guys should meet up. I think we did talk on the phone or something before I went. And we just met up at the meeting and... After the meeting, I should say. And as immediately, when we were talking, we sort of starting to, you know, how you finish the other person's sentences. Uh -huh. so I really, really hit it off right away. And so I got permission to translate his DVDs. Okay. So I did that. And then the next time, at that point, I still couldn't train. That's 2001 with the sciatica. Yeah. Um, the next time I went was 2003, which was SARS, of course. <laughs> Wonderful time. I was in Wonderful Guangzhou time. at that December in yeah. 2003. Oh, a lovely place to yeah, be. Yeah. Well, I was in Beijing, so I came and I started to train with him, but then we were shut down in quarantine, so I was training the, with Lee. I was staying with Lee and with Anne and had a, brought a friend, and we were all in quarantine, okay. having a grand time up in Huilongguan, <laughs> training away. Um, Probably then I would have started his books. Okay. They didn't come out all that. No, I think there was around that time. Around that. Whenever around they that came time. out, I yeah. started translating them. And it's a lot easier to translate when you can just ask. Him. <laughs> you know, just ask the author directly if you have a problem. You know, so. Were you training with him at all? Well, that's just it. I started to train with them, mm. and then SARS hit, and, and I was in quarantine up in the north of the city. Ah, okay. Where so, we are now, not too far from here. Like uh, Line 13 is not oh, too far yeah, from yeah, here, Kuei yeah. um, He was up for it, because he was not afraid of anything. Yeah, no, he still isn't. And he still isn't. Yeah. So, But uh, Lee was a bit more of a, ooh, you can't go out, he's a bit, of a, a bit more... <laughs> He was duct taping all the anything that came into the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> really, <laughs> all the vents. All the vents, but uh, yeah. So I didn't get out much that trip. So I really started training with him to be the next trip. Okay. I'm training a lot with him. Yeah, and so you. How long did you work on those books, those translations? Do you want some more? No. no. Oh, let's work on the beer. Yeah, um, work on the beer. Eons. So it took a while. It's not a people think that it's just oh look, it's a book, it's translated. Well, there's like I don't know, like twelve hundred pictures at least in that. Yeah. That I had to 
clean up and, and sort out and number and everything. I mean, he gave me the discs. At least he digitized. Oh, no, he didn't. He gave me the negatives. Oh, okay. Very I had to nice. go in and get them digitized and, and then uh, sort them all out and take out the trees and the buildings and everything else that they thought was a sensible background to have behind somebody doing, <laughs> doing martial arts, arts techniques. <laughs> trees, just perfect. Buildings. That's on a black and white photo. Yeah, yeah. So, no, just just the photos is eons. And then the, the translation, I'm a pretty quick translator. I basically just sort of turn off the brain and, and just go focus. Eyes, eyes to fingers. Uh, especially with D. There's something about D. Goyong that, that we just think along the same lines that I'm not breaking my head trying to figure out what he's saying. And he's a very logical, clear... He writes very, very clearly. It's, yeah. it's, he doesn't make a lot of typos and mistakes yeah, yeah. or anything like that. And you're not breaking your head over it a lot. He's very... Because my training is is uh, sports science, right? And the coaching. Yeah. And and that's that's how he writes. But you know, he's he if you, if you've spoken to him, you'll know like uh, mm -hmm. he's not he, he didn't go to university. No. But no. he read and he, he still read reads and read all and read the time. All the time. And all he would time. take out books on basketball yeah, and he, athletics. Yeah. Yes. And I mean, he writes as a coach. Yeah. Yeah. He writes as a coach. He's very clear. He knows what he wants to say. He's presenting the material. There's no garbage getting in the way. Yeah. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of garbage gets right. in the way, and there's nothing there. He's 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 very very good writer. So the Chinese version is two volumes. You've I had to go to three. Had English to go to is three. longer. Than of Chinese. course, it's yeah. longer. It's yeah. just even from a typing point of view, yeah, yeah. in terms just of the characters. words are longer. Yeah. yeah. But then, if you want to try explain things that are simpler to explain in Chinese and in English, they even become longer sometimes. So. Well, I don't. I just translate. I don't explain. I just translate. Yeah. But I yeah. mean, English takes longer to say it than Chinese. Does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chinese is beautiful for activity and right. sport. And it's just perfect language. So you started that pro. What what year did you finish those? Oh God, no, sorry. We don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> it's in the book. It, just look up the copyright date. Because that's actually, I mean, you remember how I contacted you. I saw you. T I also started with a DVD. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Beautiful DVD. And I thought, okay, this is a logical this guy. Is nice. I'd this like is to. This is nice thing he well yeah. presented. And that's when I saw that mm -hmm. you translated his yeah. books, and then yeah. you, you're like, here's his telephone number and his email address. Yeah. I think you gave me his t email address. Mm -hmm. And then I sent him an email thinking this guy's not going to answer. Yeah. And he yeah. answered yeah, like, yeah, that. like that. Yeah. And yeah. actually, uh, I came through to Beijing to. Just train with him, mm -hmm. and I he had told me, "All right, meet me here." And I wasn't too clear mm -hmm. where he said meet me. Mm -hmm. And um, at this day, at this time, and mm -hmm. I went through, and I happened to go to the wrong place. Oh dear! I did go to the wrong place because he he said Zijuan, the park, you know, purple band. Probably said across from Zijuan in, well, in the sports stadium because that's I just, where we used to train. Yeah, it, when you were allowed to, then they stopped allowing. Yeah. Yeah, oh, was that later? Yeah, oh, later okay. they stopped allowing. But I walked to Zijuan. Yeah. I kind of thought, okay, let me get to Zijuyuan. And yeah. then, and when I got to Zijuyuan, just outside the entrance, there was somebody doing water calligraphy on the pavement. Yeah, yeah. And there was a guy standing behind him with a white t shirt mm. and a uh, fanny pack, <laughs> <laughs> watching him do calligraphy mm. and talking to him about mm. his calligraphy. Mm. And I looked at him like, wait, that looks. <laughs> that, that's that's Digo Young, isn't yeah. it? I'm like, well, first of all, had I got to the allocated place, yeah. he wouldn't have been there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just happened to be in the place that he was. I yeah. came to the wrong place. Yeah. And uh, I, I said, hi, are you? He, he said, yes, yeah. it's me. Or oh, you contacted yeah. me. He said, oh, I've just come to the WC. I've just come <laughs> to the toilet here in the park. And I was coming back now yeah, by detouring with a calligraphy yeah. guy yeah, and telling yeah, him, yeah. talk to him about his brush strokes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's that's how I I got it, and it was because of your your translations of the books. Would you say that was, that was probably your first project of that size? Because that's that's for sure that was a big project. Yeah. yeah, and then you moved on to what from there? Oh, before we move on to that, how, how was the reception in general for those books? I mean, it they're must, a steady seller they're, now, yeah. but back then. I mean, Xing, honestly speaking, Xingyi and Bagua have not become so popular well, yeah, in the West until more recently. So Yeah, I mean, if I had any sense, I wouldn't have quit my day job. <laughs> but, I don't have one, so. but we don't have sense. That's why we do Chinese martial arts. Yeah, you see, I, mean. I don't, yeah. Um, it, it's, it's just a small, steady kind of a 
how many people do sing even if everybody that did sing you bought a book there still wouldn't be that many sales yeah i know that's that's so. that's the thing like even people ask yeah. me oh people how, how how are those singy videos that you're making going because yeah. i started making yeah. those 10 minute yeah. videos and and when i tell them oh, i've got uh, this many views and they're yeah. like that's not very much no, not. i'm like well look if well, everybody who yeah. does shingy in the world watches my videos not it's not gonna lot. be a huge amount it's no, not like no. i don't know basketball no. it's yeah. you know yeah, it's shingy it's shingy you know yeah. so well, i said quite some time ago that what i like was shingy and bagua yeah and even though i could make money teaching simplified tai chi i just didn't want to be there anymore yeah yeah yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And, and, i hear and, you yeah it's just not that's not who i am and not yeah. who i want to be with so what did which so, which books did you move on to from there? Uh, well, the dictionary probably started to move its way in at that point. Yeah, because that's a big project. It was a 2012 edition. Okay. I think or 2010. No, I, mean, I remember the that. There was I remember a 2012. That. Yeah, I remember. A, a, you had a free version available at some point. There still is a free version, but it's 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 not very big. No, it's tiny, but yeah. I mean that's where it started. It's still, there's still free versions and 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 like vocabulary lists and things like yeah. that. Yeah. That's very useful there. stuff though, free, anyway. Yeah. But the the probably started working on the dictionary a bit more than that, and then for. Some I don't remember when started working on the shadow, the thirty six ah. poems, and that was out in two thousand seventeen. So shadow, so that, that I mean, took a few years. Yeah, and shadow is not a translation per se of no, a book. No, it's not. That was trickier to yeah. write. So yeah, so it's it's you taking the old poems, translating them, explaining them, and yeah. So um, that's a, that could be considered. Well, it is. It's an original my, work. I consider it my first original work, not okay. a straight translation. Yeah. 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 And that was done it was two years ago, huh? Came out in two seventeen. Yeah. I remember spending all my time in the library in Shanghai in two fifteen. Because two fifteen was when I got back in touch mm-hmm. with the group in Shanghai, I think. And so I was in the there's this huge incredible work of two hundred volumes in the library that's everything that the guys could find that's been published on Wushu. Oh, wow. You don't know about that? Yeah, no, I've heard, yeah, but yeah. I've heard it's, it's 200 it's volumes. and 200 that's 200 volumes. When you talk about published, through which period to which period? From... As far back as they as could find? As far back as they could find through the Republican area. Oh, yeah, and that's something special. Yeah, I think s- s- n- not the modern stuff. Yeah. And so going through that, uh, just looking for stuff. Basic. I was trying they, to how find... Do they, how have they organized it? In date. styles or date? date? So date. that's even more difficult to sift through. You just get one because you uh, have a card that you can... You can't take... These books you couldn't take out anyway. Obviously. So they'll give you three. You go down to the reader's room. You plunk yourself down and you go through. Fortunately, hmm. Shanghai, they don't really look that much if you're taking pictures. Oh, okay. <laughs> So I make notes. I prefer to make notes, but sometimes you just take pictures. You can also Xerox. Yeah, in there you could usually Xerox. Yeah, you can yeah. go. You take it to the Xerox desk, and they'll they'll copy if you want some. Who pages. published this two hundred one? Was, um, I might have been Shanxi somewhere in Shanxi. Yeah, it seems not, to be that that seems sure, to be yeah. the place that is yeah. publishing a lot of these kind of yeah. things. It's it's an amazing resource, and I forget why I needed to go through it, but I just decided I did. Uh, and it was for the research. I was not just looking for the poems, but I was looking in the poems. I wanted to to not just do like this is by where we're so smart, which I did, <laughs> but that there's a basis there from other things that wanted to pull in other other styles, mm-hmm. and like, like just like the single whip, like a posture. Like they mentioned something about single whip. I say okay. What are they talking about there? And they go in. You mean in the thirty-six poems yeah. they talk? Yeah, they do. They talk yeah. about Dan yeah. So I see the little picture in there. It's just like five little different single whips. Yeah. Well, that's like somebody from a Ming Dynasty book that I found. It's like mm-hmm. a little single whip, and then a little Shaolin text and like doing a single whip. One yeah. is Tang Jifeng doing his Tai Chi Tang Chuan single whip. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to just to just draw on everything, basically. So you, you, you decided to make it more difficult than yeah. it already was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very good. Yeah. 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 
So one thing was to find all the Bagua books that I could to see the different versions of the poems, uh -huh. to see typos or different words, yeah, different yeah. ways it could be said, yeah. whatever, and then say, see what their commentary was as well. Yeah. So one, one job was that. And then I, for some reason, I just had to see all these vol. I just had to see, you know, see everything that was written on. We so you went through it. all two hundred volumes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long did that take? Oh, it took me my whole visit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I train in the morning and then spend the rest of the day in the library until it closed. Wow. It was great fun. Yeah, but I mean, I think that's the thing. I think that really is your calling. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, I need the training in the morning. Of I course. I just spend the whole day. No, no, no. Right. Otherwise, our bodies right. would also yeah. fall apart. Yeah. And we'd probably so, go no, insane. No, that, was, that was a beautiful visit because you just go and retrain train for a few hours and then go to the library. And they have a little cafeteria. You don't even have to eat properly. You can just go down. <laughs> just <laughs> shove something it's down. It's a crappy cafeteria food. <laughs> go back up again. And carry on yeah. looking through the volumes. Yeah, yeah. So did you find a lot of uh, things that you were unexpecting yes, or not yeah, expecting? Yes, yeah, it was fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And I had Yerick too. Ah, to, oh, he was to there too. In. Okay. So it's like, yeah, I, go, I don't understand this. And I just sort of like message Yerick. It's like, yeah. I don't know what this guy's talking about because he reads the real old stuff. Right. I know classical Chinese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did yeah. learn classical Chinese, but Yerick's a whole other level for, yeah. for classical stuff. So I, I, just, I just don't know, you know, I just send him a text and like, what's, what's this about? And he, he fared off someplace and then come back. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a really good trip. Sorry, the cat has decided yeah. to come and dig here while we're recording a podcast. Yoda, <laughs> please go, go play somewhere. Go, go play over there. Um, yeah, Yarek's another one whose website was a huge inspiration and resource way mm -hmm. back when you mm -hmm. couldn't get any like Anything, insight yeah. here yeah. and he has a really great interview with uh, Digo Young yeah. amongst yeah. other people yeah. on there too yeah. yeah he does and that was also one of the uh, you know uh, inspirations to to come and find him was to mm -hmm. read about him and and to see what uh, yeah, well, yeah it was just it, it's it's I'm glad he hasn't taken the website down because yeah. he, he hasn't had time to add anything oh, to he's, it. Oh, he posts on Facebook now instead. Like his, his But that's trips. different writing, yeah? Yeah, I know, but he should put that on his website Yeah, he should, well. he should. Yeah. So, yeah, Yarek Samansky, if people are interested, is chinafrominside.com, if I yeah. think. Anyway, yeah. I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. So, yeah, he's also a great... Uh, a great... great <laughs> yeah, but he's also, like, you could call him one of the pioneers back in the day, too, because he, he arrived here and was... Uh, he's been here for 15 years. Yeah, he's been looking around and... Yeah trying to get it. he was he's got footage from old villages as well and oh he's going off to every hermitage temple kind of place that you can find yeah and so yeah very yeah. interesting very yeah. interesting so so you 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 finished the thir the books uh, sorry the shadow on falling leaves fallen leaves mm -hmm. you released it two years ago yeah and um then you and then it was full time on full time the on the dictionary yeah which has just come out well, we could say just, but just, this year. Yeah, it did. Yeah, pretty much. A couple of just months ago. Just desperately trying to get it finished before I left. And it's great. And I and I mean, I have uh, reposted and shared and mm -hmm. talked about it. But people yeah. should really look into it if they want, yeah. if yeah. they want a, a brilliant resource and not just for uh, research reasons, but if you practice Chinese martial arts, it's. Uh, it's interesting to flip through. And that too. So and people yeah. have been saying, "Oh, I feel guilty because I don't need to look anything up, but I just like to flip." I and mean, that's part. I wrote it a bit like that. Yeah. It's not supposed to be a scholarly, dry kind of a dictionary. Yeah. It's supposed to be a dictionary written by a martial artist. Yeah. Like, this is what this means. And how's the reception um, been? Oh, uh, so people far? are saying it's really good, but they don't seem to be. I haven't got feedback on, on them really using it yet. Like, mm -hmm. that that they be able to reading a text, they look something up, the word's there. Yeah. That, yeah. that would be nice to get that kind of feedback. Well, it's, really it's still early days. All the words there. It's still early days. Yeah, yeah. Are you planning on adding and keeping uh, second, third, fourth editions in the I'll future? I'll do an addenda on okay. the website. Uh, so I'll post changes and corrections and that, but I don't want to be doing a whole lot of different volumes. One, because it's an expensive book for people to buy, mm -hmm. and you don't want to think... You know, you're gonna have to buy another one the next year. Yeah, that would be mean. The other is the indices to put the page numbers in to look them up. If that changes a lot, I will shoot myself. <laughs> I don't want to do. I that know how much you love doing this formatting and reformatting yeah. for printing and for digital yeah. and yeah, yeah. That's... And for some stupid reason, I did four different versions of it. Of this one? 
the dictionary. Why? There's the PDF. Okay. There's the soft cover. There's a compact soft cover and there's a hard cover. Why did you do a compact soft cover? So if people that couldn't afford the deluxe one could get a nice compact one for forty dollars. How compact are we talking about? It's sort of a six by nine ish kind of a thing. Well, it's like a weapon. I mean, it's just <laughs> <laughs> it's on the thinner paper. Ah, okay. Right, it's on the fifty pound paper. So it's just a, that. People should be able to afford a dictionary. Okay. Right. And the, obviously the nice one's the hardcover that is going to really hang in there. Yeah. But if you don't have that kind of money, the nice little compact dictionary, 40 bucks, there you go. Well, that's great and all, but my recommendation is to get the hardcover. <laughs> I've got the hardcover. If you're going to be using it for any any regular use, it's firstly nice to have a hardcover, but second, it's going to yeah. last longer. Oh, well, the thing is that the, the characters are big. You and that too. That was my other thing. Yeah. One is that the words aren't in regular dictionaries. Two is that I'm really tired of, of going blind translating. Like mm, dictionaries, mm, the text is always so small mm, and you're struggling away. And, and, yeah. and, and my yeah. issue is I'm, I'm half blind anyway. anyway so. <laughs> so the small characters. And when we were at university at UBC, I mean, for heaven's sakes, we had Xerox dictionaries. So we're, yeah. we're trying, like we are in the reading room with Xerox dictionaries. Yeah. Uh, so I just didn't want people to have to suffer like I did. So. And what's the next project? The next project then is the the Shanghai's Chanshu Taiji, okay. which is the not just the Ilu but the the life in Shanghai. That's the semi autobiographical. So that's the memoir slash, slash, slash uh, Taiji Chanshu book. Taiji. Yeah, oh, that's good. And so the Taiji part's written. It's already done. Yeah. Oh great! The rest is the it's so it's the, the easy part. The memoirs, no, the memoirs it's is, not the easy is, part. It's yeah. the hard part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have, yeah. No. Has it started? Yeah. Okay. It gets put in, taken out again, put in, taken out, moved to another file. Uh, no, I I'll put. I was thinking of putting. You know, how how do you do it? Where do you put the memoirs? Do you put yeah. it? Like I was trying to sneak it into the form, then you take it back out again. Uh, Anyway, yeah. Well, it sounds like yeah. a good project, and I think you should do it in any case. Yeah, that's so. what everybody says. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, now yeah. that you can still remember it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> loosely, at least. Loosely. Yeah. <laughs> are you, you're not going to put any in the memoirs? Are you going to put about your time in the university at all? Well, that's the problem, that that time is fascinating. Yeah. Uh, any time people get me started on that, and, and you realize that it was it really a different time. It's just... Just after the Cultural Revolution, things were opening up. There was a really good feeling in the country, and everybody at university was paid to be there. Yeah, like all the students were supported, and so th that's really cool, you know. Especially it's a sports university. Yeah, it was a pretty happy place to be. Yeah, yeah. And the the wushu was it was so amazing. So there was no more stigma, or was there still a bit of a stigma on Chinese martial arts, or was that done? What? Oh, oh, remnant oh. from the Cultural Revolution. Um, well, they were trying to make it uh, the modern competition stuff. The sport. As I said, the yeah. first few years, though, those students were real martial artists. Yeah, they had kept training during the Cultural Revolution. They didn't have much education. The the standards to get into university were a bit odd. So it's, it's much like D. Larcher's background, you know, kind of training, they, not really educated, yeah, but still yeah. still training through that but, period. But they were accepting people for the first few years there that didn't have much education because they did a, a little project, like a questionnaire, mm. in, at the university. And I found out that most of those people really, they had no opportunity to ed for education during the Cultural Revolution and everything shut down. Mm. But they kept training, so they, the criteria to get into the university was being good at sports. Okay. They were pretty cool people. Yeah, yeah. And then by the year 1980, you could see already there was a bit of a shift. The people were a bit more educated, but their, their level as a martial artist was not the same. Oh. They were more trained in the modern stuff. Yeah. And, and they were good. Yeah. But you could see it was a different something, type of athlete. Something else. A different type of athlete. Yeah. yeah. 
And in Canada, did you ever get involved in the official organizations that were involved? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I mean, with your background, yeah. I mean, surely yeah, it's a... you have to, yeah. You have to, yeah. and, and yeah. Uh, what year was that? Uh, I remember we, we were trying to get something sensible going in 1988-ish. Um trying not to have it all just completely controlled by guys that didn't actually do wushu. Mm -hmm. Story um, of my life. Yeah, so we tried that for a bit and it, it didn't really work and I didn't really care that much. And after 89, I didn't want anything to do with any governmental association from China at all, ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I, I just don't. Yeah, so what, what made you have that uh, conclusion about uh, not wanting to... 89? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, 89. I mean, before when I was in China, I was paid to be there. The government was a communist government. There were controls. I, I knew, like, people would get talked to if they were in my room and stuff like that. I mean, there's bad stuff going on all yeah, the time. Yeah. I knew people getting arrested and stuff. But once you start, like, shooting people and running them down. Yeah, it's a different thing. Stuff, it's a different thing. I really, really want nothing to do with the mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. And the Wushu Association is, is, Wushu Association is too much like... Like it's, that. It's government. It's Even government. in Canada, though? I no, mean, not in Canada. No, but, but you meant here. Yeah. Yeah, but it yeah. has to be. Yeah, here, so here it the has internet, to be. the whole, all that stuff, I'm just not... You know, yeah, yeah, but it's all connected. Yeah, so it's, that's it's connected. I'm just not... That's not what I do. It's not so you didn't actually pursue that in Canada yeah. or... or no. But it, it went on by itself. Though. I always went for judging for the nationals. Okay. Team selection and judging, I'd always be there. They'd ask me and I'd go. And Alex was involved as well? Yeah, yeah. He started to get involved about that mm, time mm. in the 90s. Yeah. I mean, it's a very, I mean, I know it's a very... That's that's how I got involved. Oh, that's it. That's how I got involved. Alex. Alex. Oh, that would Alex make sense. Alex asked me, I jumped. Alex is my old teacher. Yeah, of course. And so when he asked me, I jumped. Okay. So yes. I didn't, didn't question it because that's who and I And why did first. he want to get involved in this? I don't know. It's, I it's, don't know, because he's not into power or money or anything Not at like all. That. He's just a really good martial artist. He doesn't practice even the he sport version. No, he doesn't. He's a good fighter. Yeah. So he probably got in at the Sanda yeah, yeah. side of it. And well, then got, got sucked into the other side of it. I don't think there's much of a Sanda side out of Canada, though. I mean, even with my no. experience in the International Federation, no, I've I mean, very I'm rarely seen... Anything. Well, I've very yeah, rarely yeah. seen Sanda fighters. You guys yeah. always have a lot of Talu athletes. Yeah. And there was a golden period, I would say, in the... We had some good athletes. You did. Right? Yeah. But it's, I yeah. think they all went off to live life. Yeah, yeah. And so that was fun. I didn't mind judging then. Yeah. Because they were good. Yeah, they were you good. Know? And Wushu wasn't silly then. Yeah. Uh, getting there, but it wasn't... <laughs> like that Wushu wasn't <laughs> silly then. <laughs> it wasn't no, quite so silly. And it was kind of fun to judge because it was, it was still fun to watch then in the 90s. Yeah. Who were the standouts for you in Canada at that time? Um... Or is that also part that we have to write down no, for the math? No, can. Um, uh, the, the, uh, 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 um, what's her name? What's her name? Okay, yeah. we got what's her name and and and, and himself. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> uh, no, we had some good people. You did. You did. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. So. Yeah, so they have a, an, an organization. You kind of just helped in bits went, and pieces yeah, for judging. For judging. And selection, yeah. yeah so. and, and realized that that they weren't interested in... Uh, we did try for quite a while, like the the Canadian-born people, if you want to put it that way, yeah. did try for quite a while, and then we just gave up. Most of us just gave up. And if they right. want to run, do whatever. Yeah. Well, I don't know if even... I don't know if even if you had remained involved there there would have been something that would have even been closely related to what you do or the reality of chinese martial arts as yeah as it's say, something I'm not, else i'm now. not that interested anyway yeah. i got switched to traditional stars very yeah, like yeah, way back yeah. in early yeah. 80s well yeah. i always did traditional well, what was the traditional yeah. community like in canada i mean is there yeah. interaction is it very no, well mean, developed no i don't know because i don't i'm not yeah but i mean do you interact with any of the other well, in Victoria, I mean, is Alex like, still so, teaching? Well, he's, he's been in Calgary, right? So yeah. I don't. I'm in Quebec. Well, you wouldn't know. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have email now, you know. Oh, yeah, I know, yeah. You get in contact. Um, no, like in Victoria, way, way, way back in the 70s, there were a few clubs and, and we knew each other and we'd yeah. go down if there was a line dance thing, we'd support okay. each other and mm. stuff like that. Maybe New Year yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I go to Winnipeg a lot for teaching, and there's a lot of clubs there, but they tend to, they seem to pretty much stick to themselves. Okay. There's not a lot of friendliness between them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, my experience dealing with the Canadian sometimes is there's, there seems to be a lot more influx of mainland Chinese mm-hmm. immigrants now mm-hmm. in the more recent times, and there's mm-hmm. a... Some people with like a sport wushu background, mm-hmm. so that seems to be more easily available. Mm-hmm. There's always going to be animosity between teachers mm-hmm. and, you know, but apart from that, I don't know much else. It's still a, quite a small group. It's not a, yeah, it's it's a, not a very big it's group. It's a small group and nobody's making a lot of money on it. There was yeah. a little, little period there when people seemed to think they could make their living at it and then yeah. reality struck. And, uh, and then the uh, bank came knocking. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but generally we tend to be friendly with each other but there's not a whole lot of mm. contact going on but we kind of know who we are and, and we're friendly if we see each other yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah okay well so you keep to yourself mostly you teach your your students you do your writing mm. and that keeps you happy at least yeah so yeah. well i travel to teach too that too that, that's uh, a biggie so yeah. that's that's good yeah. where are you up you're up to england next yeah anywhere else uh, no, then home. Then back home. Yeah. Okay. And then and I do the Canadian trip in January. So it's twice a year for each. Okay. Uh, the Canadian trip and the, and the England. Twice a year. Canadian is somewhere else, obviously. You said. Well, yeah. Three places. Three places. Yeah. Okay. Across the country. Yeah. Which three? Guelph, Winnipeg, and Vancouver. Guelph. Never yeah. really... No, it's, at, at some point I decided that it's the small towns that do the training. Right. The big towns, the cities, there's too much other stuff going on. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of clubs there. There's a lot of people there. The small towns, they really appreciate somebody that will come in. Mm-hmm. And they do the training. They they stick together. They train together. And they come along to the seminars and they advance. And they maintain it while you're not there. And they maintain it while you're not there. Yeah. That's good. So I decided, not only decided it would just be Shingi and Bagua, which is brilliant. Yeah. But it would also just be small towns. So is that what you're focusing on in these teachings? Yeah, is mostly that's Xingyan, cool. well, like that's quite all. Beijing Stoke. Everybody goes, where is Beijing Stoke, right? Yeah. But it's a really good group, and they've been training for years with me, and they're mm-hmm. advancing, and they stick together, and they're really good people. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. And you, yeah. is it like the same people that do both, or do you have different groups for Xingyi and different groups for Bagua? Uh, the same people. Um, some of them like Xingyi more, and mm-hmm. some of them like Bagua more. And, and most of them do one. Right. But even now, the Shingi people have started to circle walk, say, because they can see that, that there's something going on there. Yeah. And most of the Bagua people could probably manage the five elements. Yeah, yeah, Shingi. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. They well, train together. So. Yeah, well, that's yeah. good. Yeah. That's good. So this is what you do. You've got your, your books coming up. I hope to see your... Uh, or get your memoir soon, soon. rather no, than later. No, it's not going to be soon. <laughs> and well, at least we've we've gotten some of your your old stories out yeah. here. Is there any particular story that sticks out in your mind from all these years, whether it was in university over the years in training? That uh, oh dear, no, uh, you can't. You, uh. Most memorable moment, most memorable teacher, <laughs> or most memorable moment with a teacher or an or incident that we haven't mentioned yet. That we should have mentioned well go ahead yeah i'm just trying to think <laughs> people that i've trained with hmm. you have to do a cut while i think <laughs> and, uh, hmm. I'll, I'll try i'll try <laughs> i'm sure there is <laughs> are you <laughs> sure there is but whether you remember it right now or not is another story well, there, there, anything that pops into mind is uh, yeah a whole other thing yeah. When you first came to China, though, were I mean, was it the China that we knew from that period where people were wearing, you know, the same old, uh, yeah, same yeah, colored yeah, jackets yeah, and yeah. riding around on bicycles yeah, with the Mao oh, hats? Yeah, the bicycles, yeah. 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 I mean, even when I first came in, like, early 2000, 2001 or something, there were still a lot more bicycles. Now yeah. there's... Then, then there were, there were, if there was a car, it was an army car. Oh, okay. Right. There were buses, and then the... 
Dunway, like the the school, if they were taking us somewhere, would be on our little you know little van. Okay. Or else it would be a, an army vehicle. And when you went to these competitions in different places, you fly, take the train. Take the train, of Take course. the train. That's yeah. an adventure all on its yeah. own. Huh? Yeah, yeah, at coal trains. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, still had coal trains in there. Isn't it interesting? Because I, that's also one of my earlier memories in China when I first mm-hmm. came, was taking a train to Inner Mongolia and back. Yeah. And it was yeah. a long trip. It's a long trip, and it's yeah. A slow, but it's fun. Yeah, I mean, been all over the country on these trains. You have trains. your snacks, you have your playing cards, yeah, you, got you have your seeds. Cards. Yeah. yeah, you got the, the, the three rows of beds going up, and yeah. you got a little table that flips down and then you sit around playing cards with eating everybody. sunflower seeds yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was great that was great. the best class to go if you went hard seat then you were with real peasants that would just sit there and stare at you yeah 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 yeah. Like, there's no no interaction whatsoever yeah. but if you're into the hard beds then you're with people who would chat and play cards with right, you and you have right. a grand old time yeah it's yeah. always a good time yeah. so now they've got the high speed train so well that's most, pretty awesome I'm yeah. not complaining <laughs> it's a lot shorter <laughs> maybe 20, you can get one hand I still of, remember the 24 hour trip yes. up from Shanghai to here yeah. I think yeah. that's when the that's when my back probably went. <laughs> that was hell. That was standing room only. Yeah. Sciatica, yeah. thanks uh, to the rail system of. Probably, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember exactly there, but I remember that 24 hour trip. That was hell. So, in the next few years, you're still planning on coming through here every year as you can? While I have the visa, I should use it, I figure. And, uh, and that months. will expire when? 25, I think. Well, who cares if it expires? You just get another one afterwards. Yeah, I just don't. I'm getting a bit tired of China. It's, it's just <laughs> Beijing, I, it's just not, you know. I know things don't say the same, and there are good things about it, but... You always seem to come at this time of the year, though. It's the only time where the weather's all right in Beijing. Well, October. it's a bit colder. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, I yeah. don't mind that. Yeah. But the air is, is fresh, and the sky is blue. Right. Any later, and we've got the really the cold gets, burning for the... Yeah. For the heaters, yeah, so it's hell. November, hell. November starts to, you can feel it. Hazardous. You can feel it hitting your throat. Yeah. yeah. And summer, no one wants to be here in summer because no. all you do is melt. Yeah. So, well, that's good. <laughs> Any last things you'd like to add? No, can't think of. <laughs> okay, so I'll put your your web links and whatever in the show notes. And if anybody's trying to contact you, whichever method best to contact you, what is the best method to contact you? Email, I guess. Is it on your website? No, I took it all off because I got so much spam and weirdness going on. So you don't want to put uh, contact. Uh, <laughs> it's up to you. If you don't want to and yeah. you don't want spam and weirdness, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, so. I, th- I think now that you can still do it through the website, but I think it's an encrypted kind of a thing or something, okay. rather than, than having it listed. There's just really, really weird things you don't want to know. Yeah, that for sure. That email. Yeah. Your books are also available through Plum Pub. Plum Pub, yeah, and, and direct through the site. Okay, so we'll put those up there. Plum Pub has been very good at supporting it, so... Yeah, that's great. Push, yeah. yeah, so let's let's yeah. put their links out there. Yeah. People can look at their other books too, because they've got a nice collection of stuff yeah, for Chinese was, martial artists. I was researching stuff at the cabin. I actually use them sometimes to get Chinese books. Right, yeah, yeah. They've also got Chinese pr- uh, Chinese yeah, yeah, language yeah. books yeah. too. And, and so. you're sitting out there in the middle of nowhere in the snow and you say, I really need this book now. And they'd send and, it to you? And they send it to you. How yeah. would you get it out there in the cabin? Well, we have mail in Canada. But do people come out to the cabin? No, 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 no. We'd have they to hike send it out. by We'd bear. Hike out. No, no. no they'd, they'd, they'd go to the mailbox. <laughs> have, we have go. mail in We'd Canada. We'd hike out and drive down to the village and get their mail and drive back. I know you have mail in Canada. Canada. <laughs> I was talking about the cabin. <laughs> Thought they send a mountie on a horse. No. No, 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 but you know, on a day that you're gonna hike out to get some groceries or something, anyway. Yeah, you, yeah. You know, get some mail. All right, we'll put that there. It was <laughs> great having you, thank and you I'm sure there's some very interesting stories for for people there. So, okay. Thank you. <laughs>